Okay, all praise to the Most High. Tonight's topic is called The Trials of Your Faith. Let's open up with the book of Zephaniah 2 verse 1. Come on. The book of Zephaniah 2 verse 1. Gather mm -hmm. yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. So this is a commandment. We are commanded to gather ourselves together. Wherever we are scattered, we are scattered today in the land called South Africa. We are, we, are, we are scattered this day because of our sins. So the Lord is commanding us that in the lands of your captivity, you must gather yourself together. You understand? Because we are a nation that is not desired by no nation upon this earth. Watch this. Give me that in... Uh, no, keep going. Keep going. You know what? Give me Matthew 24. Mm, let me read it. Popped into my head. Matthew chapter 24. Okay. Matthew chapter 24 verse 9. Read that. Start of verse 8. Matthew 24 verse 8. The book of Matthew chapter 24 verses 8. Read. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Jacob's trouble. Read. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Meaning what? The nations that despise and hate us and our people too, they will deliver us to be, they will deliver us to be afflicted. Go ahead. And shall kill you. And shall kill you and hate you. That also goes into hatred. Read on. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. You see that thing? And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So what Zephaniah is saying in the is the same thing that Christ is teaching us. He says, gather yourself together, gather together, O nation not desired, because we shall be hated of all nations for the name of Christ. You understand? So the Lord is commanding us, says, gather yourself together. We must come together because it's, 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 what is he teaching us? Unity. Because that's one thing that is foreign to us, especially in the lands of our captivity. Whenever black people, so-called black people, black and brown people, Hispanic, Native American Indians, whenever we gather together, according to the worldly wisdom, guess what? Is through politics, religion, okay? Christianity, democracy. That's how people gather together, you understand? And party. That's not what the Lord is commanding us to do. We must gather together. How? How must we gather together in these last days? Watch this. Give me Give me the book of, give me the book of Acts, okay? Give me Acts chapter 2. Give me Acts 2 verse 1 real quick. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Read. They were all with one accord in one place. He says they were all with one accord in one place. They were all in one, they were all with one accord in one place. Meaning what? We gather together because this is during the, the Feast of Pentecost. But what I want to show you here is that we were all in one accord. We all spoke the same thing. We believed the same thing. You understand? Because the reason why, you know, he's not talking about politics and all of that. Because in politics, whenever people, our people gather together, they don't believe the same thing. Yes, they might be voting for the same party, but they don't have the same belief system. One is a Jehovah's Witness, one is a Pentecost, Pentecostal, another is a, is a Methodist, you understand? Another is a ZCC, another is Mzalwani, so on and so forth. So they don't believe the same thing. So they are not in one accord. You understand? First Corinthians 1 verse 10. This is how the Lord wants us to get ourselves together. We must be on one accord. You understand? We must be on one accord. Watch this. First you know what, Jump. Well, hold on, before we go to 1 Corinthians, go back to Acts, go back to Acts, Acts, read chapter 2, verse 5, Acts 2, verse 5, watch this. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 5, read, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So now these were the Jews that gathered together at Jerusalem. On the feast of Pentecost. But what I want to show you is that it says they were in one accord. It says Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Because right now, where, where was they? They were scattered. Yeah, they were scattered among the heathens. The same way we are scattered today among the heathens. You understand? But it says devout men out of every nation under heaven. 
So how we, how we are going to come together on one accord, you understand? This is how we come together because our people were in one accord. It says devout men. What does it mean that we're devout men? Watch this, Acts 22 verse 12. Read that. Acts 22 verse 12. The book of Acts, chapter 22, verses 12. Read. And one, Ananias, a devout man according to the law. You see that thing? So Have that's you... how the, hold on. It says devout men according to the law. According to the law. So when it says devout men, Jews, that means they were what? They were devout according to the law. That's what brought them, that's what brought them together because there was a feast of Pentecost and they were in one accord according to the law. So the laws of God is what's going to bring the 12 tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel together. God's commandments. You understand? Go back to Zephaniah now. Okay. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1 again. You know what? Mm, I said 1 Corinthians. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Because it says you must hold 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10. Let's read that. First book of Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. You see that thing? That ye be perfectly joined together, that you what ye, that you what that you all speak the same thing. In order for us to speak the same thing, we must believe the same things. You understand? We must believe the same things, and what brings us together is the laws of the Most High God. Because the Bible says, "Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet." Guess what? Another brother will believe the same thing as the Scripture says: "Thou shalt not covet." You understand? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So on and so forth. So when we believe all of that, we believe the same thing. You understand? We believe the same things that the scriptures are saying. That's how we are going to what? That's how there's no going to, we, that's how we are going to speak the same things. And that's how we're going to make sure that there's no division among us. That's why Zephaniah said, gather yourself together. You understand? And as we gather together, we are commanded that not only just gather yourself together, but when you gather together, you must speak the same thing. You understand? That there be no divisions among us like there are now. You understand? It says, but ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. The same mind. We Meaning what? We must have the same mindset. When it says the same mind in the same judgment, when we judge matters, you'll judge matters the same way because we use the scriptures to judge those matters. That's nation building right there. And that's what the nations are afraid of when we gather ourselves together because they know that we don't gather ourselves together like we used to do in the world. We gather ourselves together according to what God says. And when we do that, that's where the, that's where the, 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 the saying goes, there's power in unity. Yes, this is the true, the true power in unity. The gathering together of the 12 tribes of Israel. Go back to Zephaniah now, chapter 2, verse 1. Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation, not. So we, we must gather together because we are a nation that does not desire. Because Christ prophesied about this thing. Look at what's happening upon this earth. The minute you say you are an Israelite, listen, the other nations don't like that. Including your own people, they don't like that because now you are not walking with the same access of riot. You understand? Now you are pulling yourself out of the, the filth, the lust of the world to please the Lord. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 2. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, mm -hmm. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Read. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. You see that thing? So now he is letting us know, gather yourself together before the judgment. Before the Lord returns and brings judgment on this earth. Gather yourself together that you may be delivered on that day. 
You understand? Read on. Seek ye the Lord. O ye meek, o ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. You see Seek that thing? righteousness. Hold Seek on. meekness. Wait, wait, wait. Is there a delay now? There seems like there's a delay. Could you drop off and come yes, back sir. in? Um, Brother Ntanta, I need you to pick it up. Dropping off, pick sir. Uh, is Ntanta here? Ntanta, could you read verse 7 or 2? Mm. Brother yes, Benzalil. Okay, okay, come on. I need you to stay with me. Zephaniah 2, verse 3 again. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. You see what he's saying right there? Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. Meaning what? Those that will humble down to this Bible. That's the meek. We shall, we shall wrought his judgment because we know what the judgment is in this book. You understand? It's a seek righteousness. So before the Lord returns, when we gather ourselves together, we gather ourselves together to do what? To seek the Lord. You understand? And to seek the righteousness of the Lord. We are not just gathering together for nothing. We are gathering together to seek righteousness. And where do we seek righteousness? Give me that in Deuteronomy 6 verse 25. We must seek righteousness in the laws of the Most High. You're not going to seek righteousness in politics. You're not going to find righteousness in politics. You're not going to find righteousness in the Christian church because they don't teach the laws. They don't teach how our people are going to get delivered out of the conditions that we're in. Living in the ghettos, poverty, single parent households, Baby mamas, STDs, you understand? So on and so forth. Broken families. They don't know how to teach our people to fix their broken families. There's no order and structure in the home. You understand? Deuteronomy 6 verse 25. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. Read. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. So that's the righteousness we must seek in Zephaniah 2 verse 3. Go back to Zephaniah now. 2 verse 3. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 3. Seek ye the Lord, all mm -hmm. ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. You see that thing? So now when we gather ourselves together, we are gathering ourselves together to what? To seek the righteousness of the Lord before the Lord's anger come upon us. The Lord's anger, that's the second coming of the Lord. That's the Lord's anger. When he's going to be what? When he's going to bring forth judgment on this earth. And judgment will begin in the house of the Lord. Watch this. Give me that in 1 Peter 4. Okay. Judgment will begin in the house of the Most High. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 17. It will begin in the house of Israel. Meaning what? When the Lord returns, he's going to wipe out wicked Israelites first. That's what that means. Read that. 1 Peter 4, verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. Go ahead. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Mm -hmm. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the that obey not the gospel of God. You see that thing? So now judgment will begin in the house of the Lord first. It has already begun. The judgment has begun already. Why? Because the Lord is waking us up. You understand? Because in the last days, the Lord, what? He put us in slavery. You understand? And we're not saying in the old days we was not in slavery. We was. But in these last days, guess what? The transatlantic slave trade happened. That is the judgment that began at the house of the Lord. You understand? The sub sahara slave trade, the Silk Road slave trade, colonization, forced migration, all of which happened in these last days. We're talking about these last days now. So it already, it already began in the house of the Lord. Now when the Christ makes the second coming, guess what? Wicked Israelites, they are going to be put to death first. 
the one, the two third, they are going to be wiped out first. They are going to be put to death on that day because they are not going to repent. Nor will they even try. They don't care, period. Okay, now, go back to Zephaniah. Zephaniah 2, verse 3 again. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 3. Read. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which mm -hmm. have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. You see that thing? That's the reason why he's saying gather yourself together. We must gather ourselves together because of what we just read. And we must gather ourselves together to seek righteousness before the, the great day of the Lord's anger be upon us. You understand? Watch this. Give me Sirach 25 and 1. Okay, because when we gather ourselves together, we gather ourselves together by the word of the Most High. And as we gather together to seek righteousness, guess what? We start to learn how to deal with one another as we gather ourselves together. We learn how to treat each other. We learn how to correct one another. We learn how to grow. We learn how to deal with problems in the body. That's why the Lord said, gather yourself together so you can be able to, uh, to build together. Okay? Sarah 25 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 1. Read. Right? In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and man. Mm-hmm. The unity of brethren. You see that thing? That's the power in unity. That's the power of us gathering ourselves together. And when we do so, guess what? We are beautifying the Most High. We are glorifying the Lord when we do that. The unity of brethren. When there is unity among us, when we get along with one another. I'm not saying there's not going to be problems. There will be problems. But in order for, them, for us to solve those problems, we use Bible solutions to solve the problems that we have. Okay, go ahead. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. Because we must love one another. Give me that in 1 John, chapter 3, verse 11. 1 John 3, verse 11. 1 John, chapter 3, verse 11. Read. For this is the message that he heard from the beginning. From the time of Genesis. The message, the message. Go ahead. That we should love one another. You see that thing? That's the message. Love one another. How do we love one another? We love one another according to the commandments of the Most High. We correct each other. Let's get some more. Give me that in Leviticus 19, verse 17. Leviticus 19, verse 17. The message that we should love one another, this is how we love one another. Leviticus 19, verse 17. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Go ahead. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt not hate your brother in your heart. That's a commandment. That's how we make sure. That's how we love one another. Okay, go ahead. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. He says you must. You must in any wise, you must rebuke your neighbor. You must rebuke your neighbor according to the scriptures. Go ahead. And not suffer sin upon him. Meaning not allow him to be in the midst of sin and you can see it. The Lord is saying, we must correct our neighbors. Go ahead. Thou shalt not avenge, mm -hmm. nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. You see that thing? That's why when he says the love of neighbors, the unity of brethren, because what brings us together is what? The word of the Most High. We, when we seek righteousness, now we get, we get to learn how to have the same mind, how to have the same judgment, like we read in 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. So go back to Sarah 25 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 1. Mm -hmm. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful before God and man. Both the unity. Before, it says both before. Read that right. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 1. Go ahead. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and man. Mm -hmm. The unity of brethren. Read. The love of neighbors. Mm -hmm. A man and a wife that agree together. These are the three things that beautify the Most High. The unity of brethren, when we come together under that covenant of salt, you understand? 
it says the love of neighbors we just read that in leviticus 19 in first john 3 11 and the man and a wife that agree together because guess what it says from the beginning it says we were commanded to love one another watch this because our forefather adam the prophet the mighty prophet he was okay watch this this is what he said give me that in genesis 2 okay genesis chapter 2 and verse 23 watch this the book of genesis chapter 2 verse 23 go ahead and adam said this is now bone of my bones mm -hmm. and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man so now this is our forefather adam now because that's when he after eve was formed out of his rib he says now this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh meaning literally she comes from me she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man next verse go ahead therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and shall cleave unto his wife Read. and they shall be one flesh you see that thing adam is prophesying here he's, he's setting up the order of marriage right here you understand in the spirit of christ it says therefore shall a man future tense Meaning from this day forth, this is how marriage is going to be. That's what he's saying right there. It says, therefore shall a man, future, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. A man and a wife that agree together, in order for them to agree together, they must be one flesh. They must be in the same mind and in the same judgment. That's what Aram is he's prophesying right here. That a, all the marriages are going to be just like this. Because he is the, he is the epitome of what marriage is supposed to be. They shall be one flesh. Watch this. Give me that in Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Because Christ, he quoted Adam right here. Watch this. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4. The book of Matthew chapter 19 verse 4. Go ahead. And he answered and said unto them, Have mm -hmm. ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? He made them at the beginning. So he is going back to the beginning. He is going back to Genesis. Okay, go ahead. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. You know, and another thing here, you notice here it says, um, it says, shall a man, shall, shall, future tense, meaning what? From the time when Adam prophesied about it, guess what? It's, you remember, Adam, Adam was a God on earth. Adam was a prophet. So Adam is prophesying, listen, it says, shall a man leave his father and his, ma and his mother and shall cleave to unto his wife? Remember in Genesis 2, um, he said, she shall be called, she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. So Adam is prophesying how marriage is supposed to be. And the people involved in the marriage is going, it must be what? Man and woman. That's what he's prophesying. You understand? Because he knew that in the last days, there's going to be some evils up on this earth. And that's what you are seeing now. Now people are, they, they, this, this alphabet community, they'll be saying, no, no, I'm not a she, I'm not a him, I'm an it. You see that thing? That's why Adam had to prophesy about this thing. And Christ, he took it all the way back from the beginning, how everything is, how everything was. You understand? Read that again. Verse 5. The this is some heavy stuff Matthew. right here. Read that. Matthew chapter 19, verse 5. Read. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh, and they twain shall be one flesh. They twain, they too, shall be one flesh. So Christ is reiterating the point. Man and woman come together and you shall be one. That's how you beautify the Mosai, as one. One flesh. One spirit, one mind, one judgment. You understand? Next verse. Go ahead. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. Meaning they are no longer separate now. They are no longer individual lights. 
You understand? They are one now. You understand? Read. What therefore God had joined together, let not man put asunder. You see that thing? Let not man put asunder. Join it, it, it meaning when the Lord bring them marriage together, no man must put it asunder. You understand? Because marriage is honorable. Give me that in Hebrews now. 18 verse 4. You understand? It says, therefore, God, that which God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Hebrews 13, verse 4. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Go ahead. Marriage is honorable in all, mm -hmm. and the bed undefined. Read. But warmongers and adulterers, God will judge. You see that thing? Marriage is honorable in all. Everything that has to do with marriage is honorable. Because guess what? As a nation, as long as our people are still wanting to be gays, wanting to be lesbians, they are not interested in nation building because how can a man and a man build a nation together, you understand, get married? Because that's not a marriage. Marriage is between man and woman, not man and man, not woman and woman. Mm -mm. That's not a marriage. God does not recognize that thing. That is not a marriage. That's some filth right there. I know the alphabet committee don't like that, but that said the Lord. That's not marriage. You understand? Now, read that again. Hebrews 13, verse 4. 13, Hebrews 13, verse 4. Go ahead. Marriage is honorable in all. Go ahead. And the bed undefiled. Mm -hmm. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. You understand? And that's what you are seeing today. Because of whoremongering, black men and black, black men and whorish women, whorish black women in the community, that's why today the families are broken up. There's no marriage. It's fat and set. It's makwapeni. You understand? Is getting some strange. Is baby mamas and all that. Booty calls, what have you. That's what we have today because of what? Because we don't honor marriage as Adam commanded. We don't honor marriage as Christ commanded. We don't do that no more. That's why now and that's why now we are not beautifying the Mosai. The Mosai says, I'm beautified when man and wife agree together. You understand? In their proper order, according to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3 down. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms. You know what? No, no, not Psalms. Ephesians. Okay, give me Ephesians 5 now. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ephesians 5 verse 22. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. Go ahead. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. You see that thing? It says, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now, the reason why I'm reading this is, is going to be clear as we read down. So wives must submit themselves unto their own husbands as unto the Lord. The same way they submit themselves to Christ, they must submit themselves 100% unto the man, the husband, their Lord. Go ahead. For the husband is the head of the wife. What? For the husband is the head of the wife. Read again. For the husband is the head of the wife. So the husband is the head of the wife. That's the law. The husband is the head of the woman. You understand? The husband is the head. There's no 50-50 here. The law don't deal with that because that's not of the Lord. That's of Satan. 50-50 is of Satan. It's not of the Lord. So read that part again. Verse 23. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23. Read. For the husband is the head of the wife. The husband is the head of the wife. The man is the head, not the woman. The reason why you see today the nation of Israel, the so-called blacks, Bantus, Hispanics, Native American Indians, the 12 tribes of Israel were so destroyed is because why? The woman is in the front, the man is at the back. But the women have never led anybody anywhere because in God's movement, the men are the leaders, not the women. You don't see anywhere in the nation. In fact, you know what? When you look at, when you examine these other nations, right, you examine the white man, the Chinese, the Arabs, the, the, 
the, um, the Japanese, you understand? You don't see, then women is, the, the, the women is not in the front. It's only in the nation of Israel where they are pushing women in the front, men are taking the back seat. You only see that in Israel. You understand? You only see that thing happening in the black community. And that's why we're so destroyed as a people because everything is out of order. Things are not in their proper order when men is supposed to be in the front. The women supporting the men in the front. That's why the families are broken. You understand? Read that again. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23. Read. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Mm -hmm. Even. And you see that part right there? Even as. The husband is the head of the, is the, head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. So the same way the husband is the head of the house, is as Christ is the head of the church. So guess what? The man represents Christ in the household. Read again. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23. Read. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Read. And he is the savior of the body. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 27 now. 27 that he might present it to himself a glorious church. So stop not right having there. Sport. That he, meaning Christ, might present, might present it to himself. What's the it? The church. Christ might present the church, he says, might present it to himself, a glorious church. The it, guess what? The, the, the church begins in your house. It's you, your wife, and your children. That's the church. And then from there, the congregation. So the congregation is an extension of the household. Is the is the is an extension of the family structure, meaning men, women, and children. The congregation is, is an extension of that. You understand? Read that again, verse twenty-seven. Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-seven. Go ahead. That he might present to himself a glorious church, mm -hmm. not having spot. You see that thing? Not having spot. Without sin, that's what is going. That's what is, this is going into. Go ahead. Or wrinkle. Or what? Or wrinkle. Or wrinkle. Because this is an this is a similitude. Read verse twenty six so we can get it. Ephesians chapter five verse twenty six, mm -hmm. that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You see that thing that he may sanctify and cleanse it. The it is the church which begins in your house with the washing of water by the word. So now, read verse 27 now. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, read. not having spot Stop or right wrinkle. Not, hold on, not having spot. Because when you wash your clothes, guess what? I agree you are making sure that there's no spots on your shirt, on your t-shirt, on your, on your jersey and all of that. You use the soap to wash it so that there's no spots on your clothing. You understand? So after you wash it, it says, or oh, what? Or oh, wrinkle. Or oh, wrinkle. So these wrinkles, guess what? Guess what you, you, you use? You, how, what, what do you use to remove these wrinkles? You use an iron. You understand? You iron your, your clothes to make sure that everything is neat. So that's what Christ is doing with the, with the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what he's doing with men and women and the children, which is what? The, the, the beginning of the church. You understand? But for that church to form, which is in the house, men and women and children, before that happens, the men must be in order, the woman must be in order. When you come together, you believe the same thing. That's the beginning of the church. Then the extension goes into the congregation. You understand? Read again. Verse 27. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. Mm-hmm. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, Read. not having spot mm -hmm. or wrinkle or any Read. such thing. But Read. that Come it on. should be holy and without blemish. You see that thing? It says, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Why? Because he is washing it by is washing it by what? It says he's cleansing it by the washing of water by the word. So now this church right here. 
the church, guess what? The church is, is what we read in Sirach 25. Go back to Sirach 25 and 1. We're coming back here. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 1. Read. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. Mm -hmm. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. But you notice that the man and a wife that agree together, that's the foundation of the church. A man and a wife that agree together, guess what you're going to have after that? You're going to have the love of neighbors, you're going to have the unity of the brethren. You see this thing? Because guess what? When you are by yourself, you are getting yourself right. You get married, guess what now? You now know how to deal with your, your wife. Your wife knows how to deal with you. According to the scriptures, guess what? When now you have, the, there's a congregation going on. Now we have to interact with one another. But you know how to deal with, you know how to deal with things now because you've been in that trial. You understand? Watch this. Go back to where was that? Ephesians 5. Read verse 28 now. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 28. Mm -hmm. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that Come loveth on. his wife loveth himself. So now he says ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Because God, guess what? When you love yourself, you clothe yourself, you bathe yourself, you put lotion on yourself, you feed yourself, you drink. The same way you do that, you must do the same for your wife. Go ahead, read. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but mm -hmm. nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. You see that thing? Even as, even as the Lord the church. Meaning the same way you take care of yourself, which is how you take care of your wife, is the same way you wanna, is the same way Christ took care of the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? So Christ is to the 12 tribes of Israel and the man is to the woman. You understand? So you cannot separate Christ from the 12 tribes of Israel the same way you cannot separate man from woman. It's the same thing in the sight of the Most High. Go ahead. Because so what we, we're um, reading here, hold on. Because what we're reading here when it says, uh, read 28 and 29 together. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28. Mm -hmm. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Read. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Mm -hmm. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord, the church. Now watch this. Hold this. Give me Sarah 36, 24. Because this is a precept for that. Okay. It says, for no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it. Watch this. Sarah 36 verse 24 now. Ecclesiasticus chapter 36 verse 24. Read. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. You see that thing? He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. Because that possession you must do what? You must nourish and cherish that possession. You understand? Read. A hell like unto himself mm -hmm. and a pillar of rest. You see that thing? A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. So when it says a help like unto himself, this is what it means. Watch this. Give me Sarah 726. A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. Let's understand when it says a help like unto himself. Read that. Sarah 726. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 7, verse 26. Read. Has thou a wife after thy mind? You see that part right there? Has thou a wife after thy mind? When it says a help like unto himself, you must get a wife that is after your mind because she's going to be a help like unto the way your mind is. That's what that means there. Read again. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Read. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Mm -hmm. Forsake her not. Forsake her not. Remember what we read in Sirach 25. It says a man and a wife that agree together. Because who's supposed to agree to, who's supposed to be in agreement with the man? The woman. That's why it says submit yourself 
unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So when it says, Has thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, because she's after your mind. She's a help like unto yourself, a help me to you. So in order for her to be a help me to you, she must be after your mind, because your mind is after the Lord's mind. Watch this, Sirach 6 verse 37, because this is where your mind is at. So her mind must be after where your mind is at. Watch this, Sirach 6 37. Ecclesiasticus chapter 6 verse 37. Mm -hmm. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. Read. He shall establish thy heart and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. So now when it says, let thy mind be, let thy mind be upon the ordinances, the ordinances thus the laws of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. So guess what? Your mind is after the commandments of the Most High God. Her mind is supposed to be after your mind. So likewise, in the, in, the, in, the, in, in, in the marriage, the wife's mind is after the husband's mind. In the congregation, the nation of Israel is after the Lord's mind. And the Lord will set up leadership to set the people in order. That's how it goes. There's no anything, there's no, you can't go around it. You cannot go around it. When you go around that, you are going against the order. You understand? Now, go back to Ephesians. No, no, finish, finish Sirach 726. Let's finish that first. I'm getting ahead of myself. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Go ahead. Hast thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not. Mm-hmm. But give not thyself over to a like woman. Don't give yourself over to a dumb sister. Don't, don't do that. Because your mind must be after the Lord's mind. That's what the Lord told Adam. He says, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. You're supposed to listen to the Lord. She's supposed to listen to you and follow you. You understand? Now, let's go back to Ephesians. No, no. Let's go back to Sirach 36 verse 24. Sirach 36 verse 24. Ecclesiasticus chapter 36, verse 24. Go ahead. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession, mm -hmm. a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. You see that thing? A help like unto himself. You see that part right there? Because this is the part where he's overlooked. He says, a help like unto himself. Not, you see, this is, this is the reason why a lot of the times, Sisters don't understand this verse right here. A help like unto himself, a wife after your mind, and a pillar of rest. Be the, the reason why she's going to be a pillar of rest is because she's, she's executing your program. That's why she's going to be that pillar of rest. Because you setting up the order, this is how it, things need to be executed. She needs to fit into your, your vision. Once she fits into your vision, now you are, you guess what? She's after your mind. You agree as one. You speak the same thing. You agree together. The minute she comes up with her different program, that's when she will become a pillar of rest. Because now she's messing up with the architecture of what you are trying to build. You see this? That's what it means when it says a pillar of rest. Because you're going to rest knowing that, you know what? This, the, the, the architecture is actually what? The building is going according to the, 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 the blueprint. You understand? It's going according to the blueprint. Because imagine, here you are, you want the house to be built. You put the blueprint together, you bring the people that are going to build the house. They are going to build the house based on the blueprint. Now here comes a Negro. He decides, you know what? I'm not going to put a kitchen here. Instead, where the kitchen is supposed to be, I'm going to put a bathroom. You see that? So get, now you are stressed out. You know why you're stressed out? Because now it's going to cost you money now to, de, to start over when it comes to, you. now you need to switch the kitchen with the bathroom. That costs money and time. You see that thing? So you as the person that's supposed to fit the bill, you are stressed out now. Where am I going to get the money now to, for them to switch the bathroom with the kitchen? 
You see that thing? So I'm just trying to show you, uh, you sisters, you need to understand. Give me Proverbs 14 verse 1. Proverbs, so you see the topic of marriage will never end. Okay? Proverbs 14 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1. Read. Every wise woman buildeth her house. Mm -hmm. But the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. You see that thing? But the foolish will pluck it down with their hands. Because he's not going to follow the blueprint that you as the architect has put together. So now, the building, here we build the building, but the foundation is not right. You understand? Because somebody decided, I'm not going to follow the blueprint. I'm going to do my own thing in the bedroom. I'm going to set, I'm not going to put concrete. I'm just going to put cement. Now the foundation is not solid. You understand? Here comes the storms. Here comes the winds. Here comes the heavy rains. Before you know it, the house is falling upon itself. And the people in it, they die while they are sleeping. Because somebody decided to cut corners and say, no, I want, I'm not going to buy concrete for this room right here. You see this? So, I mean, look at the, when, we, when you go to Santin, right? There's this, there's this bridge that fell. There's a bridge that fell, you understand, in, when you go to Santin. There's a bridge that fell. A lot of people died on that day. They had to rebuild it because it wasn't done correctly. When you look at it now, it's done proper. You understand? But they had to pay for that. They, it cost them. They lost money because now it has to be redone. And now there's the people, the, you know, the, the public has, the government, people, people that died, they've sued the company that built that because it wasn't done right. Now they lost money. Over and above that, they have to rebuild the bridge. That's why it says a pillar of rest. There's a reason why he's using the word rest there. Because you can rest well knowing that everything is moving as, uh, is, is, everything is, is moving as planned. That's the point. You understand? Let's go back. Sarah 36, verse 24. Ecclesiastes, chapter 36, verse 24. Go ahead. He that gets as a wife beginneth a possession, mm -hmm. a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. You see that thing? A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. Now go back to Ephesians now. 5 is 28 and 29 together again. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 28. Mm -hmm. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Read on. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord the church. Because guess what? Is he that gathered the wife beginneth the position. We are the bride to the we, we we are the we are the bride to the to to Christ, as the nation of Israel. You understand? We are the bride. So guess what? The same way we are the bride to Christ is the same way the wife is the bride to her husband. She is the possession. You understand? Keep going. Verse thirty one. Watch this. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. And they too shall be one flesh. This is the same thing that Adam said. Same thing that Christ said. The apostle Paul is saying the same thing. Read verse 31 again. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 31. Mm -hmm. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. And they too, they twain shall be one flesh. Next verse, go ahead. This is a great mystery. Mm -hmm. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Read verse 32 again. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 32. Go ahead. This is a great mystery. Stop right there. It says marriage is a great mystery. Marriage is a great mystery because the, man, the husband, the man represents Christ in the house. The woman represent the disciple. You understand? So that's a great mystery. Marriage is a mystery between Christ and the nation of Israel. That's what marriage represents. So a man and a wife that agree together, guess what they are doing? That's a representation of Christ and the church. 
That's some heavy stuff. That's why marriage is an honorable thing. That's why marriage is so important to the Most High. Why? Because marriage, a good marriage represents what? Christ and the church. Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the mystery of marriage. That's why marriage is not something to be taken lightly. That's why marriage is not something to play with. Okay? Verse 32 again. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32. Go ahead. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Now, watch this. Give me the book of First Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Watch this. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? You see that thing? If a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Because guess what? That's the same thing which I have. All the scriptures we went over is what the Apostle Paul is explaining here to Timothy. If you as a man don't know how to rule your own house, you don't have your wife in subjection, you don't have your children in subjection, you will not be able to take care of the church of God, the church of, the, the church of God. Why? Because your marriage is a representation of what? Is a representation of Christ and the nation of Israel. So if you cannot get your house in order, you will not be able to get the nation of Israel in order. That's the point. Because your marriage is a representation of the nation of Israel and Christ. That's why when, a, when you have a strong marriage, you are able to build a strong nation. Because why? Because that nation that is being built is a representation of what? Of your marriage. Which is a reflection of Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why Christ is a governor and he's ordering the, his government on earth. And we are that government. And he's the governor. And his government must be in order according to what is written. It must be well ordered. You understand? Next verse. Watch this. Not a novice. You know what? Mm. Yeah, yeah, read it. Read it. Read verse 6. I'm going to come back to it later on. First Timothy chapter three okay. verse six. Read. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. You see that thing. So it says the leaders of the church must not be a novice, not a novice, lest be less lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Why? Because you're not gonna you're not gonna be nation minded. You are going to be individual minded. You're not going to think about the nation as a whole. You'll think about yourself. That's why it says not a novice. I'm going to deal with that later on. Now, give me the book of Colossians 3, verse 12. Colossians 3, verse 12. We're dealing, remember, I took you to marriage. To, I took you to uh, men and wife that agreed together. That's the marriage. You understand? Now, I'm sure I'm moving into the congregation now. Why? Because marriage is a representation of the congregation. That's the mystery of marriage, okay? Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. Let's read that. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. Read. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy mm -hmm. and beloved. Read. Powers of mercies. Kindness. So he's commanding, hold on. Now he's talking, this is now the church. We move from the men and women, which represent the, the Christ and the church, now we are dealing with the actual church now. I'm not saying the marriage is not the actual church. It is. The congregation is an extension of that. Okay? Read that again. Verse 12. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. Go ahead. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy mm -hmm. and beloved. Read. Bowels of mercies. He says you must put on as the, as the congregation, the elect of God. He says we must put on bowels of mercy. We must have mercy with one another. Go ahead. Kindness. Kindness humbleness of mind. with one another. Read. Humbleness kindness with one mind. another. Humble, humbleness of mind, meaning what? We must humble. You're, gonna, you're only going to get humbleness of mind if you apply what is written. You must humble your mind to the laws of God. Submit to God's commandments. Read. Meekness. You see that? You must meekness, meaning submit. Read. Long suffering. Long suffering. That's patience. 
you suffer long the same way Christ is suffering long when it comes to us. Hold this. Give me the book of First Peter. Okay. Because the apostle Peter, he, 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 he addressed this thing. Okay. That the Lord is long suffering to us what? Um, is not part of my notes. Just give me one second. I can't even see nothing here. The Bible is all covered up. Um, where is that at? But the Lord is long suffering. I think it's Second Peter three, Second Peter chapter three, and verse. Yeah, somewhere there. Look for it. It's verse fifteen, sir. Okay, read it. Second Peter no, chapter no, no, no. three, verse. No, no, not not that one. Not that one. That's not the one I want. He's in Second Peter's though. Uh, is long suffering to us what? Where's that at? Yes, verse 9. Read it. Second Peter 3, Second verse Peter. 9. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Go ahead. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Meaning what? The promises that the Lord, the promises that the Lord made with to our forefathers, they are going to be fulfilled. The Lord is not slack. You understand? He's not like concerning the promises that he made to our forefathers. Go ahead. As some men count slackness. Because as some men count slackness, meaning some men, they are thinking that the Lord is not going to deliver on his promises. That's why they count slackness. Why? Because they have no patience. They don't study. They don't understand what's going on where we at in prophecy. Read. But his long suffering to us would. You see that thing? He's long suffering to us what? Meaning who's what he, what does he mean us what? Us, Israelites. He's long suffering to us what? He's meaning what? He's giving us a chance to get it together before the Lord returns. Go ahead. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Because that's what the Lord wants. He wants all of us to come to repentance. He doesn't want any of us to be put to death. The Lord doesn't want, what kind of father wants that? No father wants that. You understand? So that's why he's long suffering to us what? Meaning keep the commandments while you're waiting for the Lord to return. Let's go back. Colossians. Chapter 3 verse 13. Colossians chapter 3 verse 13. Go ahead. Forbearing one another. We must forbear and... one another. Hold on. We must forbear each other. So what does that mean? Because you might have a brother or sister that gets on your last nerve. The Lord says you must forbear one another. Because this is in the congregation now. We must forbear one another. You understand? We must bear each other. You understand? That's what he's saying. Read. And forgiving one another. And forgiving one another. We must forgive one another. The brother does you wrong. Forgive your brother. Forgive your neighbor the wrong that he has done unto you. I think it's a Sirach. Some, Sirach. I think it's in Ecclesiasticus. Give me one second. Might be verse 19. Might be chapter 19. One second. Mm. Uh, it's not part of my notes. Just give me one second. It says, forgive your neighbor the head that he has done unto you. Okay. You know what? Give me Sarah 10 and 6. Give me Sarah 10 verse 6. Read that for me. Ecclesiasticus. You know what? Sarah 28 verse 2. I found it. But we're going to go to Sarah 10 and 6. Read that. You know what? Start at verse 1. Sarah 28 verse 1. Let me write this down. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 28, verse 1. Go ahead. He that revenges shall find vengeance from the Lord. You see that thing? Meaning what? You return evil for evil. He says you're going to find vengeance from the Lord. Go ahead. And he will surely keep his sins in remembrance. The meaning the Lord is, in the, the most High will not forget your sins. He's not, your sins will not be blotted out. Let me put it that way. Your sins will not be blotted out. Why? Because... You are retaining evil for evil. The Lord says, your sins will be kept in remembrance. Go ahead. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he had done unto thee. You see that thing? That's a commandment right there. Forgive thy neighbor 
the hurt that he had done unto thee. This is one of the biggest problems in Israel, lack of forgiveness. We don't know how to forgive one another. You understand? We are bearing grudges, bearing hatred. You understand? And we are bearing bitterness. Read that again, verse 2. Ecclesiastes, chapter 28, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he hath done unto thee. Read. So shall thy sins also be forgiven when thou prayest. Now, that's heavy right there. That's Matthew 6 right there. It says, forgive your neighbor the hurt that he hath done unto thee. So shall thy sins also be forgiven when thou prayest. Could you imagine? Every day you be praying to the Lord, but you don't forgive nobody. But you pray to the Most High, but you don't forgive. The Lord says, I'm not going to forgive your sins as well, because you don't forgive. You are having bitterness and anger and, 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 and poison in your spirit. Okay, go ahead. Verse 3. One man beareth hatred against another. One man beareth hatred against another. Go ahead. And doth he speak? And doth he seek pardon from the Lord? So do you seek pardon from the Lord? You want your Lord to pardon your sins, but you don't want to forgive your brother? You don't want to forgive your brother the wrong he had done unto thee? The Lord will not pardon your sins. Go ahead. He showeth no mercy to a man which you don't is show like mercy. himself. Hold on. Wait, 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 whoa, whoa. Read that slow. He does what? He showeth no mercy to a man mm -hmm. which is like himself. He says, you show no mercy to a man which is like himself. You don't show mercy to your brother who's just like you, who made in the image of God that you claim you love. You can't make this stuff up. Go ahead. And does he ask forgiveness of his own sins? But you, do you ask forgiveness for your own sins? That not make no sense. Go ahead. If he that is but flesh nourish hatred. Hold on. It says, if he that is but flesh nourish hatred. Because when you don't forgive, you are nourishing hatred, the Lord is saying. You don't forgive, you are nourishing hatred. So meaning you are feeding it. Because whenever you are, you are watering the hatred, you are watering it every day and it's growing. Because it says you are, no, you are nourishing hatred. Who does that? Somebody that is not in the scriptures. That's why there's so much hatred between men and women. That's why there's so much hatred in the nation of Israel because men and women are nourishing hatred one toward another. You understand? There's no peace between them. Go ahead. Who will entreat for pardon of his sins? Nobody. He says, who will entreat for pardon of his sins? Nobody is going to what? No one is, no, no one is going to pray for your sins to be forgiven because you don't forgive nobody. You understand? Read on. Remember thy end and mm. let enmity cease. Remember corruption and death and abide in the commandments. You see what he's saying? He says, remember thy end. Remember what your end will be if you don't forgive your neighbor. Let enmity cease. Let that bitterness and hatred stop. Remember corruption and death because you are going to be corrupted and you will drop dead. And abide in the commandments. What does the commandment say? Jump up to verse 2 again. Verse 2. Forgive mm -hmm. thy neighbor the hurt that he hath done unto thee. Read. So shall thy sins also be forgiven when thou prayest. You see that thing? That's the commandment which you must remember. Jump back to verse 9 now. Verse, verse 9. Read verse seven. No, read verse 7. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verse 7. Read. Remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. Mm -hmm. Remember the covenant of the highest and wink at ignorance. You see that thing? Remember the, cover, the covenant of the highest. We went over this last night. Remember the covenant of the highest and wink at ignorance. Read the next verse. Abstain from strife. Uh, you see that thing? Abstain. Abstain from strife. Give me James 3.16. We're coming back here. Abstain from strife. The Lord is commanding us. Because in order for us to bear one another, to forgive one another and all of that, this is what we have to apply. If you don't apply this, you will not be able to bear one another. Okay? 
Watch this. Read that, James 3, 16. James chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. You see that thing? Where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Meaning what? Whenever there's envy and strife, there's Satan is all up in there. And Satan is not half in or mm -mm, he is 100% in that situation. Whenever there's envy and strife, jump up. Okay. Jump up to verse. Hmm, read verse 14. Let's read verse 14. Three, verse 14. Go ahead. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, mm -hmm. glory not and lie not against the truth. You see what James is saying? He says, don't have bitter envy and strife in your heart. He says, don't glory, for, don't glory over that thing. You, that's, not, that's not nothing to be glorious about. Hold this. Give me 1 Corinthians 5 verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 6. He says, don't glory over the fact that you have bitter envy and strife in your mind. Okay? 1 Corinthians 5. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Your glorying is not good. You see that thing? Your glorying is not good. So don't glory over stuff like that. Go ahead. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lamp? You see that thing? That small, that small evil that exists in your spirit, you don't check it. It says it's going to corrupt the whole body. It's going to corrupt your whole mind. Go ahead. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. Get rid of the old sins. Read. That ye may be a new lamp. That you may be a new creature in Christ. Go ahead. As ye are unleavened. As ye are unleavened, meaning you are cleansed, you are sanctified from your filthiness. Go ahead. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Because Christ died. Read on. Verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven. Not with the old evil that we're carrying around. Go ahead. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. We were dealing with malice last night. Neither with the leaven of malice, because malice, that's leaven. Wickedness, that's leaven. Those are evils. Those are demons. Go ahead. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. You see that thing? Meaning you must be sincere. Keep it real. How many of you ever told that? Keep it a hundred. It says with the what? With the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Let's go back to where we was at now. James chapter 3 verse 14 again. James chapter 3 verse 14. Go ahead. If ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory mm -hmm. not, and lie not against the truth. Because when you lie against the truth, what does that mean? The scripture says, thou shalt not have envy and strife among you. Forgive one another. When you don't forgive one another, guess what? You are lying against the truth. You are taking the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Why? Because you are going against what is written and you know to do better, but you don't do better. You still want to be that Negro that was in the world. Go ahead. This wisdom descendeth not from above. Stop right there. This wisdom right here, bitter envying and strife. Yeah, it says, this wisdom descended not from above. It does not come from the most high. Go ahead. But it's earthly, mm -hmm. sensual, devilish. You see what James is saying? You see the book of James, some heavy stuff. It says, but it's earthly, sensual, and devilish. Meaning what? It's of the devil. Satan is running the show on this one. You understand? The Mosa is not in the Mosa is not involved in this. Satan is the one that's running the whole show. He's running the whole thing on this. You understand? Go ahead. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. You see that thing? Where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. That's some heavy stuff right there because you see envy and give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 2. I'm going to show you where the spirit of envy, the spirit of envy, that's the spirit of Satan. And strife, that's the spirit of Satan. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2. Okay, verse 24. Watch this. 
wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 24. Go ahead. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. You see that thing? You see how envy came into the world? The devil. The devil. It says, nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. And they that do hold of his side do find it. Now, that's heavy. You understand? So, think about it. It says, nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. That envy of the devil came through who? Eve. That envy of the devil came through Eve. Because the devil de beguiled Eve. Guess what? When you have envy and strife and bitterness and all that, guess what? Satan is running you. Yeah. Satan is running the whole show. The Lord is not anywhere in, the, in that thing. Satan is the one that's running the whole show. Understand that? Okay. Go back to James. James chapter 3 verse 16. James chapter 3 verse 16. Go ahead. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Next verse. Come on. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Stop right there. You see that part right there? But the wisdom that is above is first pure. Give me Titus 1. Give me the book of Titus real quick. Titus chapter 1. Okay. Titus 1 and verse 15. Titus 1 verse 15. Titus chapter 1 verse 15. Go ahead. Unto the pure, all things are pure. You see that thing? Unto the pure, all things are pure. Because what purifies you? The laws of the Most High purifies you so you can be pure. So that's why it says, unto the pure, all things are pure. Read on. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Read. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. But even their mind and conscience is defiled because your conscience, because your, your conscience is what? The most that God's laws is supposed to deal with your conscience. If your conscience cannot even submit to the laws of the most high God, listen, that's a state of emergency. That's the state of emergency right there. You better seek the most high God. You better seek him 10 times more when your conscience, guess what, is seared with a hot iron. It's like somebody took a hot iron and left a stain in your spirit, in your brain. Nobody can fix that. Even their conscience, their mind and conscience is defiled. That's what you read about in Timothy. Okay, let's go back. James chapter 3 verse 17. So I'm showing James. you the contrast. So here it says, but wisdom that is from above is first pure. Because unto the pure, all things are pure. Because those things that are pure is the laws of God. The laws of God is perfect. Like you read about in Psalms 19 verse 7. Okay, read that. James 3. Verse 17. James chapter 3, verse 17. Go ahead. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Read. And peaceable. Then what? Then peaceable. Then peaceable. Because if that wisdom coming from the most high God, you're going to make peace. Hold this, watch this. Give me Matthew 5. Mm. You see, Christ commanded this thing of us. This is, these are the things that um, um, we, as a nation of Israel, we struggle with this thing. And this is the milk. Matthew 5 verse 9. Watch this. You know what? Start of verse 8. Mm, start of verse 7. Beautiful stuff right here. Matthew chapter 5 verse 7. Go ahead. Blessed are the merciful, mm -hmm. for they shall obtain mercy. That's what we read in Sarah 28. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Because when you are merciful unto a man that look like you, guess what the Lord will do? The Lord will give you mercy in the day of judgment. Go ahead. Blessed are the pure in heart, mm -hmm. for they shall see God. You see that thing? When the Lord returns, they want to see him. Go ahead. Blessed are the Blessed. pure in heart, pure in mind. Because unto the pure, all things are pure. Go ahead. Blessed are the peacemakers. Mm-hmm. For they shall be called the children of God. I want you to read verse 9 again. I want to show you something with this verse. 
Read again. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Go ahead. Blessed are the peacemakers, uh -huh. for they shall be called the children of God. So let's think now. So if you don't want to make peace with your neighbor, it says, those that make peace, it says, for they shall be called the children of God. So what's the flip side? Those that don't want to make peace, they are the children of the devil. This is some heavy stuff right here. I mean, you really need to hold this. Give me John 8. This is some heavy stuff right here that's coming out. Take heed, brothers and sisters. John chapter 8, verse 44. Watch this. You know what? Start of verse 47. We're going to jump up. John 8, verse 47. Watch this. John chapter 8, verse 47. Go ahead. He that is of God heareth God's words. Mm -hmm. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Because guess what? Remember what the scriptures say. It says, if you are of God, you're going to hear God's word. The scripture says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now, if you don't want to make peace, you are not the child of God because you don't want to what? You don't want to hear the word of God, the commandment that says, make peace with your brother. Jump up to verse 44 now. Watch this. 44. Ye are of your father the devil. You see that thing? Because remember Christ said, he says, for they shall be called the children of God. Ye says, ye are of your father the devil. Because you don't want to make peace, you are the child of the devil. Go ahead. And the lusts of your father, ye will do. Okay, read verse 44 again. Come on. John chapter 8 verse 44. Read. Ye are of your father the devil, mm -hmm. and the lust of your father ye will do. Now, you see, notice it says lust, plural, and the lust of your father ye will do. One of those lusts is hatred, anger, envy, not wanting to make peace, strife, bitterness, all of that. That those are the lusts of the devil. That's what, the, that's what Satan comes with. He comes with these things. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a what? He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning. That goes into Cain when he killed his brother because his brother was doing well. He was not. So instead of getting himself right, he, the spirit of the, he hated his brother enough to kill him. That's why he says, he that what? He says, because he what? He was a what from the beginning? He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning. Go ahead. And abode not in the truth. He abode not in the law. Now watch this. He was a murderer from the beginning. Hold this. Give me first John 3, 15. He was a murderer from the beginning. Watch this. First John chapter 3, verse 15. Go ahead. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. You see that thing? Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Read. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Meaning you're not going to get the kingdom with the spirit like that. Now watch this. Jump up to verse, verse 12. Read verse 12. 1 John chapter 3 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, the Cain was of the devil. Cain was of that devil because he's talking about Cain when he says he was a murderer from the beginning, what we read in John 8. Nor as Cain, who was of that wicked one. He was not of Adam and Eve anymore because he killed his brother. Now he belonged to Satan now. Go ahead. And slew his brother. He slew his brother. He killed his own brother. Read. And wherefore slew he him? Stop right there. So he says, why did he kill his brother? We're going to get some answers right here. Read on. Because his own works were evil. Stop right there. Because his own works was evil. He was doing some evil SH. Go ahead. And his brother's righteous. You see that thing right there? So his righteous deeds of his brother activated him to be the devil because he didn't want to do what? He didn't want to get right like his brother was. You see this thing? That's the spirit of Cain. Go back to John 8. 
John 8, verse 44 again. John chapter 8, verse 44. Read. Ye are of your father, the devil. Mm -hmm. And the lusts of your father, he will do. Read. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Mm -hmm. Not in the law. The not in the law. Because he was supposed to what? To have peace with his brother. Read. Because there is no truth in him. Because there's no law in him. Because the law is supposed to restrain you. The laws of God was not in him. Go ahead. When he speaketh a lie, he when speaketh, he speaketh of the his lie, own. You see, when he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own. Read. For he is a liar. And the father of it. You see that thing? Watch this. Now, I want to show you something. Go to the book of Genesis 4. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4, watch this. Genesis chapter 4 and verse, let's start at verse 3. Genesis 4 verse 3. Watch this. Genesis we're still chapter dealing, we're 4. Still dealing, hold on. We're still dealing with Matthew 5 verse 9. Don't miss the point. And we're going to go back to James 3 verse 17. I have not forgotten the point. Genesis 4 verse 3. Read what you got. Genesis chapter 4 verse 3. Mm-hmm. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought off the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. So Cain decides to bring an offering unto the Lord, the fruit of the ground. He is bringing lettuce, cucumbers, uh, beans, bananas, and apples. Okay? That's not what the requirement is. Give me that in Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. We coming back. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. Go ahead. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? Mm -hmm. But to fear the Lord thy God. That's the first thing. To fear the Lord. The, the first thing you must do is fear the Most High. Go ahead. To walk in all his ways. To walk in all his ways. Read on. And to love him. And to love him, read. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That was the problem with Cain. Cain did not serve the Lord thy God, the Lord, the, the most high God with all his heart and with all his soul. He was one foot in, one foot out. He was double-minded. He didn't fear the Lord. Go ahead. To keep the commandments of the Lord mm -hmm. and his statutes, which I commanded this day for thy good. You see that thing? Go back to, Gen to go back to Genesis now. 4. Verse 3 again. So Cain, he didn't follow the requirement. The requirement is he must fear the Lord his God. Meaning what? Follow the instructions to the T. Don't add your own spices. Genesis 4 verse 3 again. Genesis chapter 4 verse 3. Read. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought off the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now what Abel. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. The reason why I'm saying Cain did not follow the requirements because Cain didn't fear the Lord. Watch this. Give me Genesis 3 now, 21. Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Mm -hmm. And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Now, this is after Adam and Eve has sinned. Though now the Lord is bringing Adam out of his fall. Like we read about in Wisdom of Solomon 10. That's when the Lord brought Adam out of his fall. Now he's introducing animal sacrifice. Okay? Coats of skin and clothe them. The coats of skin comes from the what? The, comes from the animal being sacrificed. That, that, that's what this is going into. The law of animal sacrifice was introduced here. So now these are the parents. They are, obviously, they taught the children. Genesis 4, verse 3 again. Genesis chapter 4, verse 3. Go ahead. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. That's not the, 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 the cause of skin. He brought fruits and veggies. Next verse. Let's see now his brother, what, what, he, what, what he's bringing now. Okay? Because it's time for them to offer. Okay? For their sins. Read to get atonement. 
Go ahead. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Mm -hmm. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So the Lord had respect unto Abel's offering. He had respect unto Abel and his offering. Give me that in Numbers 18 verse 17 real quick. What this is going into. Numbers 18 verse 17. Watch this. Numbers chapter 18 verse 17. Read. But the firstlings of a cow or the firstling of a sheep mm -hmm. or, or the firstling of a goat thou shalt not redeem. Read. They are holy. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar. You see that thing? Their blood. Their blood. The key is their blood. Their blood. Go ahead. And shall burn their fat for an offering made by fire. You see that thing? Thou oh, wait. Thou shall what? And shall burn their fat for an offering made by fire. You see that thing? It says, and shall burn their fat for an offering. For that's an, this, is an, this is a sacrifice here. This is the law of animal sacrifice. That's what Abel did. Our forefather Abel, this is what he did. He followed the requirements to get atonement for your sins. You must offer up your firstlings of your flocks and the fat. That's why it says to burn their fat for an offering made by fire for a sweet savor unto the Lord. Cain didn't want to go that route. He decided, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to bring fruits and veggies before the Lord. Go back to where he was at. Genesis 4 and verse 5 now. Genesis chapter 4 verse 5. Go ahead. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. He had not respect. Read. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. So now you really need to think about this. Remember what we read in John 8. You understand? Remember what we read in John 3, 1 John chapter 3. Remember what we read in John in Matthew 5 verse 9. It says, blessed are the peacemakers because they shall be called the children of God. Cain, the reason why Cain was called the child, child, the child of the devil, that was his decision to make. He made that decision. He didn't want to repent. It says, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Why should Cain be angry? Because, guess what? Should he? Does he have a right to be angry here? No. He has no right to be angry. Give me Jude verse 18. Jude verse 9. Let's get to the point. Jude verse 19. Watch this. So we can see what's really going on here. Jude verse 19. Let's read that. Jude, verse 19. Go ahead. These be they who separate themselves, mm -hmm. sensual, having not the spirit. You see that thing? These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. Cain didn't have the spirit to change. He didn't want to change. You understand? He separated himself from the order that the Lord gave. Listen, this is how you get forgiveness for your sins. You must bring uh, the fatlings of your flock and the fat thereof. So I can take it so for, uh, for a burnt offering, for a sweet smelling savor unto me, meaning unto the Lord. Cain didn't want to do that, but instead of getting himself right, he got upset. He took out his anger out on his brother because he didn't want to get himself right. So go back to Genesis 4 now. Genesis chapter 4, verse 6. Genesis chapter 4, verse 6. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? So what you mad for? Why are you mad? Okay. Why are you mad? Why is thy countenance fallen? Why you've got a long face like that? You understand? Meaning what? This is an example. This is a this is a today's version of, of what is called a tantrum. That's what this is called. Go ahead. If thou doest well, shall if thou you not do be well, accepted? If you do well, if you do what I tell you, if you do as it is commanded, bring the firstlings of your flock and the fat, and so you can bend the, the you can offer a bent offering. If you do well, shall you not be accepted? 
will, will I not accept you, said the Lord. Read. And if thou doest not well, if sin you don't want, day. If you don't want to do what I'm telling you, what did he say? Sin lies at the door. Sin lies at the door. Meaning what? Your desire will be to serve Satan. You're not going to make peace because you're going to serve Satan and his job is to cause confusion, strife, hatred, bitterness. That's his job. You're, you're going to serve that unclean demon called Satan. Go ahead. And unto thee shall be his desire. You see that thing? Unto thee, unto Cain, Cain's desire will be to serve Satan. That will be his desire. You understand? Go ahead. And thou shalt rule over him. Meaning Satan is going to rule over Cain. You see the point? Next verse. Now, Cain didn't get himself right. Next verse. Go ahead. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. You see that thing? Because remember, day to day, Cain is looking at his brother. His brother is continuously doing what? Making strides to get himself right. He doesn't want to do that. He is not self-examining himself. Instead, what is he doing? He is focusing on his brother when he's getting himself correct and the Lord is okaying his act. He is becoming angry and envious of that. Now, over time, what did he end up doing? He ended up killing his brother. Instead of getting himself right, he decided, I'm going to kill my brother. I get what he could have done. He, should have, he could have got himself right. Guess what? He was going to have peace between him and his brother. He was going to have peace. But he didn't want that. That's the point. Now let's go back to John 8. Now we understand what, what this is saying. John 8. John chapter 8, verse 44 again. John chapter 8, verse 44. Go ahead. Ye are of your father the devil, mm. and the lusts of your father ye you will do. You see that thing? You are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye you will do. Meaning Satan has many lusts. He is the father of, of, of lusts. That is that, listen, he is the father of lusts. So any type of lust you can think of that goes against the laws of God, Satan is running the show. So now he says, he says what? Read that part again. And the last of your father you will do. You will do the last of your father. One of them is hatred and killing. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning because we just read about that. Go ahead. And abode not in the truth. He did not abide in the truth because what was the law? The law was if you want forgiveness for your sins, you must bring an animal that should be sacrificed so your sins may be blotted out. Cain didn't want to do that. He decided, no, I don't want that. I'm going to bring what I think is right. Go ahead. Because there is no truth in him. Because there's no law. The laws of God was not in him. Read. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Mm -hmm. For he is a liar and the father of it. You see that thing right there? Go back to Matthew now, chapter 5, verse 9. So we understand what we're reading. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 9. Go ahead. Blessed are the peacemakers, mm -hmm. for they shall be called the children of God. You see that thing? The peacemakers are called the children of God. But the, those that like to cause confusion and strife, like it says in James, those are not the children of the Lord. Those are the children of Satan. Those are the children of Satan. Understand that. Okay. Watch this. Go back to James now. Okay. James 3 verse 17. James chapter 3 verse 17. Go ahead. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Mm -hmm. Then peaceable. Then peaceable. So the wisdom that is above is what is pure and peaceable. Meaning what? You want to make peace because that, that's when you'll be called the children of God. And the only way we're going to be, there will be peace between, one, one, the, between the brothers and the sisters in the, con remember we're dealing with congregation right now. 
The only way there's going to be peace in the congregation is what? You have to keep God's commandments. You have to get rid of the lusts of your father, the devil. Go ahead. Gentle. Gentle with, be, to your brother. Go ahead. And easy to be entreated. Easy to be entreated. Kind. Read on. Full of mercy and good fruits. Full of mercy and good fruits. The fruits of the spirit we know. Give me that in Galatians 5. Full of mercy and good fruits. And the reason why he's saying good there. Because you can have a fruit and it's not a good fruit. It's a bad fruit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Go ahead. But the fruit of the spirit is love. You see that thing? Love. We just read about that in Leviticus 19, 17 and through 18. First John 3 verse 11. Go ahead. Joy. Joy. You have, you'll have joy in this truth. Go ahead. Peace. Peace, yes, yes, that's, there's, there's that word again. Peace, one between, one between one another. Go ahead. Long suffering. Long suffering, read on. Gentleness. Mm -hmm. Goodness. Faith. I need you to read quicker. Go ahead, verse 23. Meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. You see that thing? Against such that we just read. There's no law against this. Go back to where he was at. James 1. I mean, James 3 verse 17 again. James chapter 3 verse 17. Mm -hmm. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. You see that thing? That's what we were going over last night. Next verse. Go ahead. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. What The fruit of righteousness is the commandments of the Most High. That's the fruit of righteousness. That's what we read in Galatians 5. It says, is sown in peace of them that make peace. But the fruits of wickedness, they are not sown in peace. They are sown in strife, envy, anger, confusion, hatred. That's the fruits of what? That's, those are the fruits of wickedness. Because guess what? Though the fruits of wickedness are not sown in peace. They are sown in confusion. They are sown in strife. They are sown in argument. That's the fruits of wickedness. They are not planted in peace. They are not planted in peace. That's some heavy stuff right there. You understand? Now let's go back to Sirach. Sirach 28. Because we're still over there. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28 and verse 8. Sirach 28, verse 8. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Abstain from strife. You see that thing? Thou... Abstain. Hold on. Abstain from strife. That's the reason why we went to all these precepts. We were dealing with this. Abstain from strife, meaning stay away. Go ahead. Repent from it. Read. And thou shalt diminish thy sins. Meaning your sins will be wiped out. Go ahead. For a furious man will kindle strife. A furious man will kindle strife. That's what he's saying right there. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to Colossians. Chapter 3, verse 13. Colossians 3, verse 13. Watch this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Go ahead. Forbearing one another. Forbearing one another. Read. And forgiving one another. Mm -hmm. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do he. You see that thing? It says, as Christ forgave you, so also forgive your neighbor. Forbear, forbear one another. This is now on the congregation level. That's how we make sure that there's peace in the congregation. There's peace between brother and brother, sister and sister. You understand? The love of neighbors, the unity of the brethren, the man and a wife that agree together. Those things only happen when we apply what we are reading here. Go ahead. And above all these things, put on charity. Charity means love your neighbor as yourself. That's charity. Go ahead. Which is the bond of perfectness. You see that thing? Charity. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. 
That's the word, the bond of perfectness. Read on. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Mm -hmm. To the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. You see that thing? It says, which also ye are called in one body. The congregation. To, you are called in one body. The body of Christ. We come together in peace to make peace with one another. So we can grow as a congregation. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Corinthians 2 verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6. Second Come Corinthians on. chapter 2 verse 6. Go ahead. Sufficient to such a man is this punishment, which was inflicted of many. So now this goes into a brother that what? A brother that had to be kicked out of the camp because he was in the midst of sin. He didn't want to repent. Now at this point, the brother has repented. He has returned back to the congregation. Watch this. Give me First Corinthians 5 and 1. First Corinthians chapter. Remember, these are just long letters. Chapters and verses were added later for reference. First Corinthians 5 and 1. First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1. Go ahead. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. You see that thing? This is the church of Corinth. It says it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. That's what we're dealing with. Go ahead. And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. That one should have his father's wife. That one should sleep with his stepmother. One should have his father's wife. Jump down to verse 11 now. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or a covetous. Or so an now the apostle, hold on. So now the apostle Paul is explaining because this fornication that he was going on is giving an example of that fornication that was going on in the church of Corinth. But it doesn't have to be this particular type of fornication, any type. It says that one should have his father's wife. Now it says, but now I have written unto you and I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator. So this is talking about brothers and sisters in the truth with us. Go ahead. Or covetous. Or covetous. Or an, read. Or an idolater. Mm -hmm. Or a railer. A railer, go a, ahead. Or a drunkard. Drunkard, read. Or an extortioner. Mm -hmm. With such and one know not to eat. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, with such and one, don't deal, don't, don't keep company with that brother or that sister. Next verse. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Meaning what? Meaning we're not going to judge those that are without, that are outside this truth. They are in the world. Go ahead. We don't deal with those. Read. Do not ye judge them that are within? He says we must judge those that are within, meaning in the body. Go ahead. But them that are without, God judges. Those that are in the world, the Lord judges them. Go ahead. Therefore, Put away from among yourselves that wicked person. So the Lord is saying, those that are within the body, those that you, those you judge. He says, put, put them out of the congregation. Now let's go back. Go back to 2 Corinthians now, chapter 2, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. Go ahead. Sufficient to such a man is this punishment, which mm -hmm. was inflicted of many. You see that thing? He says that punishment was sufficient because he was inflicted of many. Go ahead. Now he's back. Read. So that contrary wise, you ought rather to forgive him. He says now you must forgive the brother. Forgive the sister. Read. And comfort him. And comfort that sister or that brother. Read on. Lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. You see that thing? He says so that we don't, he must not be swallowed up by, by much sorrow because he was sorrowful. So, but, and he, guess what? Second Corinthians 7 verse 9. He was sorrowful and his sorrow, he sorrowed to repentance. Second Corinthians 7, start at verse 1. We're going to jump to verse 9. Second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Go ahead. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, 
Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Mm -hmm. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, mm -hmm. but that ye sorrowed to repentance. That you, but you sorrowed, that you were made sorry. Now you are sorry, but that you were sorrowed, your sorrow was to repent. You sorrowed to repent, meaning what? The judgment that came, it motivated you to repent, get your mind right. Like we read in verse 1. Come on. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner. The godly that manner is what? Hold on. He says, you were made sorry after a godly manner. What does that mean? Romans 7 verse 7. This is how he says, you were made sorry after a godly manner. This is how you are made sorry after a godly manner. Watch this. Romans 7 verse 7. Romans chapter 7 verse 7. Mm -hmm. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Mm -hmm. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. You see that thing? I had not known sin, but by the law. So you were made sorry after a godly manner because guess what? The laws of God was brought to you so that you can be able to see the sin that you are in so you can repent. Go ahead. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. So lust is covetousness. That's what he's saying. And you can only know that when the laws of God are brought out to you. You understand? Go back to 2 Corinthians now, chapter 7, verse 9. 2 Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that he sorrowed to repentance. Read. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. You see that thing? So you were made sorry after a godly manner because the laws were brought out to you and then your sorrow came, came to you because of what? You wanted to repent, not because you didn't want to let go of the, the filth that you was in. You see that thing? Read on, verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. Meaning what? Not for you to stop, but you must continue in that path of repentance. Read. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Because, you see? But the sorrow of the world worketh death. If you are sorrowful because you want to return back into the world, or you don't want to let go of the things in the world, guess what? That's going to get you killed. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? Go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Wherefore I beseech you that he would confirm your love toward him. Uh, read that again. I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him. You must confirm your love towards who? The him is Christ. We must confirm our love towards Christ. How do we confirm it? We keep his commandments. First John 5 and 3. Read that. You know what? Give me John 14, 15. Let's read that. Give me that precept. John chapter 14, verse 15. This is how we confirm our love towards Christ. John chapter 14, verse 15. Mm -hmm. If you love me, keep my commandments. You see that thing? That's how we confirm our love towards Christ. We keep his commandments to show that we love him. Go back. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Mm -hmm. For to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you whether ye be obedient in all things. That whether ye be obedient in all things that are written therein. Excuse me, go ahead. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. You see what he's saying? Because remember he was writing the, the letter to the church in Corinth. He says, to whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also because I'm not there. You understand? Go ahead. For I forgave anything to whom I forgave it. Mm-hmm. For your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. 
meaning in the spirit of Christ, I'm forgiving it because you forgive the brother, I forgive him also. You don't forgive the brother, I don't forgive him also because I'm not there, you are dealing with him. You understand? That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. Go ahead. Now he's going to let us know why that forgiveness is, is needed. You understand? Watch this. Verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Read. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Because you see what Satan's devices? Satan's devices is what? Lack of forgiveness. That's what we read in, in Sarah 28. Satan's devices is lack of forgiveness. When you are hovering that hatred, that bitterness, that envy, that anger, that, that listen, all men of evil stuff towards your neighbor, that's Satan's devices, meaning what? That's how he moves. Now you are, in the, you are in the realm of Satan at that point. He's doing whatsoever he will. But you still got fringes and bottle of blue, you think you are, in, you are in the truth. No, you are not in the truth. You are in Satan. You understand? You are acting his movie. He wrote the movie for you. You're just an actor in his movie at this point. And guess what? Your character is going to be killed off. Now watch this. Give me the book of Revelation 2. Because guess what? We were, this, this, what we just went over, these are con this, this is the problems in the body and how, how we must deal with one another in the body. All that we just read is how we deal with one another in the congregation. Okay, watch this. Revelation 2 verse 1. Because this is when Christ wrote letters to the seven churches, there was a lot of problems in different churches and Christ had to address that. You understand? And he had to tell them the things that he found that was wrong in the congregation and the things they must do in order to fix those problems. You understand? Watch this. Revelation 2 verse 1. Revelation chapter 2 verse 1. Mm -hmm. unto, the, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. So now it says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right. So obviously this is not talking about the angels in heaven. It's talking about men on earth. Give me that in um, 2 Samuel 14. Give me 2 Samuel chapter 14. I believe it's verse 17. 2 Samuel. Okay, 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 17. Read that. 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 17. Read. Then thine handmaid said, The word of my Lord, the king, shall now be comfortable. For as an angel of God, so is my Lord, the king, to discern good and bad. You see that thing? So now... It says, as an angel of God, so is my Lord the King to discern good and bad. So he was referring to the King as a what? As an angel of God. Go ahead. Therefore, the Lord thy God will be with thee. Now let's go back. So what I want to show you here with this is that the, the men on earth were referred to as what? Angels. So he's not talking about Uriel, Raphael. No, he's talking about men on earth. So go back to go back to Revelation 2, verse 1 again. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? Now these unto things. The angel, hold on. Unto the angel of the church. So the angel, it goes into what? The leaders of the church. Because their job is to judge matters and guide the nation. You understand? So it says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? So the leaders of the church that was at Ephesus, it says, this is the letter that, you, that must be sent to them. Go ahead. These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, mm -hmm. who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. So now he says, he says, he says, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, what are these seven stars? Revelation 1 verse 20. Let's get what these seven stars are. Revelation chapter 1 verse 20. Read. 
the mystery of the seven stars which thou sowest in my right hand mm -hmm. and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches he says the seven stars are the angels meaning are the leaders of the seven churches go ahead and the seven candlesticks which thou sowest are the seven churches so the seven the the the, the seven candlesticks which is the menorah which thou sowest are the seven churches. Now go back to Revelation 2 verse 1 again. Revelation chapter 2 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Read. I know thy works and thy labor, and thy patience and how thou can cannot canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars read verse 2 again revelation chapter 2 verse 2 mm -hmm. i know thy works and thy labor and thy patience he says i know thy what i know thy I, works I know their works, meaning what? The church at Ephesus was doing a lot of works in the body. They were doing the works of the Lord and they labor. They were laboring in the truth, okay, and their patience. You see, the church of Ephesus is similar to this, is similar to soldiers of Christ. We can identify with this one. It says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. Because we have works, we have we labor, we have a lot of patience in this camp, okay? And as, as how that can not bear them which are evil. We always put in brothers on blast. It says, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars. I want to deal with that just for a second. Give me First Timothy 3 verse 6. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 6. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 6. Go ahead. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. You see that thing? It says, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. So guess what? When we be setting brothers up, we cannot be setting novices. When we see that brothers have potential to be in a particular position, guess what? Your job is to do what? Your job is to seek counsel daily. Your job is to seek how you must move. You must seek counsel on 100% of the things you do. Why? Because it's about nation building. You understand? It's about nation building. Because guess what? When you don't do that, Satan will jump on you. He says what? Let's be lifted up with pride. You will fall into the condemnation of the devil. Satan will take over. You understand? Satan will say, I got it from here. You understand? Watch this. And this is the mindset of what brothers that are set up this is the mindset that you must have and i'm talking about all the brothers that are going to be set up as well watch this give me the book of sirach 32 verse 7. this is the mindset you have to have in order for you not to fall into the condemnation of the devil watch this sirach 32 verse 7. ecclesiasticus chapter 32 verse 7. now watch this now what i want to show you here is how to make sure that you don't fall into the condemnation of the devil. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 32 verse 7. Read. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. Mm -hmm. And yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, speak, young man, if there be need of thee. If there's a need for you to speak. If there's the need for you to speak is when you are what? It says, and yet scarcely. When thou art twice asked, meaning you have to really con consider it is that are they calling me? Are, is, is leadership talking to me? Because when it's said once, you can just be ignoring it because there's no possible way that I'm being called for this. When you are called the second time, is okay, now, now I see, okay, they're talking to me now. You see that thing? That's the spirit you have to carry yourself with. Next verse, go ahead. Let thy speech be short. Let thy what? Let thy speech be short. The reason why it says, let thy speech be short, give me Proverbs 10 verse 19. 
Some of you have already, dealt, I have already counseled you on this. Let thy speech be short. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. Go ahead. In the multitude of words, they wanted not sin. You see what he's saying? In the multitude of words, they wanted not sin. Meaning in the multitude of words, the sin is involved. Because what? Somebody's trying to confuse you. Okay, read on. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. You see that thing? But he that refraineth his lips is wise. That's some heavy stuff. Go back to where he was at. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 8. You know what? Before we go back to Sarah, give me 2 Timothy 2, verse 16. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 16. It still goes into what we just went over. 2 Timothy 2, verse 16. Read that. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 16. Read. But shun profane and vain babblings. Mm -hmm. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, but shun, meaning what? Shut down profane and vain babblings, the multitude of words. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Because there's the spirit of ungodliness in the multitude of words. Let's go back. Sirach 32, verse 8. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 8. Read. Let thy speech be short. Let your speech, that's a commandment. Let thy speech be short. Go ahead. Comprehending much in few words. Because the key is comprehension. The key is, you must comprehend what is being brought out to you. Let thy speech be short. What is he saying, really? Give me James 1. I love the book of James. James chapter 1. James 1 verse 22. No, no. James chapter 1 verse 23. Yeah, verse 23, that's what I want. Read that. You know, start of verse 19. We're going to jump. James chapter 1 verse 19. Read that. James chapter 1 verse 19. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. He says you must be swift to hear, quick to hear, slow to speak. Because when you are quick to hear, that's why, so that's why here in Sirach 32, it says comprehending much in few words. Slow to speak, quick to hear. Because comprehension is the key. That's how you're going to learn. Comprehension is the key to learn and understand. Once you understand, you know how to apply. You see that? Go back to where he was at. Sirach 32, verse 8. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 32, verse 8. Read. Let thy speech be short, mm -hmm. comprehending much in few words. Read. Be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. So he says, he's, he's not saying you know. He says, be as. He says, be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. So that's why it says, speak, young man, if there be need of thee. Because there's no need for you to speak. Just be quiet and learn. He says, the, the way you are going to be quiet is based on the beginning of verse 8. Let thy speech be short, comprehending much in few words. Be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. So the Lord is not saying you know, because verse 7 tells you that. So he says, but you must be like the one that knows and yet, yet holdeth his tongue. You must act like the one that knows. And yet he is holding his tongue. You see that? Go ahead. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. You see that thing right there? So that's what I saw with the brothers that been raised up and all of that. That's what I saw. It says, if thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. Just be quiet and learn. Don't, the minute you get a promotion, don't think that you are somewhere because you are not. And that's how you're going to fall because you're going to think you're somewhere. You're going to be lifted, with, lifted up with pride. And guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to go back to where you was at. So now he's saying, don't make yourself equal with them. It says, and when what? Keep going. 
And when Asian men are in place, mm -hmm. use not many words. You see that thing? When ancient men are in place, use not many words. Because what are you going to add to the conversation? What are you going to say? You don't have no experience. You understand? You're just coming out of your mother's womb. You don't know nothing. So guess what? You must learn. You, that's why it's important to seek counsel and ask questions. And the stuff that you are dealing with, don't be like that lion surrounded by hyenas. No, you must seek counsel so you can be given the proper guidance of how do you deal with this situation right here. That's, that's the spirit that the Lord is looking for. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 28 verse 25. Sarah 28 verse 25. Ecclesiastes chapter 28 verse 25. Read. And weigh thy words in a balance. You see that thing? It says, weigh thy words in a balance. Meaning what? Keep your spirit in check. You understand? Keep it short and sweet. Weigh your words in balance. Meaning what? Be mindful of the things you say. Go ahead. And make a door and bar for thy mouth. Make a door and bar for thy mouth. Meaning what? Make sure that your mouth is in check. That's what the Lord is teaching us. Next verse. Go ahead. Beware thou slide not by it. You see what he's saying? He says, beware thou slide not by it. Because you can slip and fall by your mouth. Go ahead. Lest thou fall before him that lies in wait. Lest you fall before those that are waiting for you to fall. You understand? Because of your big mouth. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 6 verse 18. This is how you remember what we read in 1 Timothy 3 verse 6. This is, this is, these are preventative measures for you to make sure that you don't fall into the condemnation of the devil. Sirach 6 verse 18. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 18. Read. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. You see, you see what, that's the key. That's where, as long as, that's where it says, speak young men, if they be in need of thee. Because the, you young men, your job is to what? Is to gather instruction from your youth. When you get promo promoted, a lot brothers, they stop gathering instruction. And that's the reason why you are in the condition, you are in the position you're in now. Because it says, my son, gather instruction from the youth up. When you get promoted, you must gather even more instruction. Because you understand that, listen, this is a responsibility. I need to make sure that I do not get lifted up with pride so Satan doesn't get hold of me. So you, your job is to gather instruction from the youth up. Hold this, watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 14, okay? Proverbs 14, no, Proverbs 15, verse 32. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 32. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 32. Go ahead. He that refuses instruction despises his own soul. You see that part right there? He that refuses, because to refuse means I don't want. The law says you, you hate yourself when you hate, despise instruction. When you refuse instruction, the law says you hate yourself. That's an example of self-hate. Go ahead. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. But if you hear reproof, you're going to receive understanding. So go back to Sarakna, chapter 6, verse 18. So whenever you even, right now, some brothers, their potential of being getting promotions and all of that, your job is right now is to gather instruction. Gather instruction. Read that again. Uh, Sarak 6, verse 18. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, verse 18. Mm -hmm. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. So shall thou find wisdom till thine old age. Because if you don't get an instruction from your youth up, how are you going to be able to find wisdom when you get old? You're not going to get one. Because it says, because when you get old, when you get older, you age, you're supposed to have wisdom. Because you've seen things. You've done things. You have experience. What to do, what not to do. 
But as long as you're not gathering instruction, you think you know. When you get old, you're going to be an old fool. Don't nobody want that? You don't want that. You don't want to be that old. Watch this. Hmm. Give me that in Ecclesiastes. Okay. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 13. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 13. Go ahead. Better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king. Mm -hmm. who, who will no more be admonished. You see, you don't want this. You don't want this right here. It says, better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. Because if you see, like, when we go to camp, we meet older men that when the, the scriptures come out, they act like kids. They throw tantrums. The things they say out of their mouth, unbelievable. You understand? So, you don't want that situation. So that's why it says you must gather instruction from the youth up. Okay? Go back to Sirach 6, verse 18, once again. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, verse 18. Read. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up, so shall thou find wisdom till thy old age. Go ahead. Verse 19, because if you don't, if you don't gather instruction from your youth, you understand, as a young man, watch, keep going. Come unto her as one that plows and soweth. You see that? You see that? The, what, the person that is plowing and sowing, that's the person that's laboring. Meaning what? They are making an effort to learn, to apply, so that they can get themselves right. It says, come unto her, the hair is wisdom, as one that ploweth and soweth. Because when you plow and sow, you're going to reap the benefits, but later on. So that means, while you're waiting, you have to develop the spirit of patience. Go ahead. And wait for her good fruits. Mm -hmm. For thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her. Read. But thou shalt eat of her fruits right soon. In due season. Read on. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. That, that's it right there. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. Hold this, 2 Peter 3, verse 15 now. It says, the she, which is wisdom, it says, is very unpleasant to the unlearned. So, guess what? When you are unlearned and you are lazy to study, to sit down and study, guess what's going to happen? The spirit that will jump on you is the spirit of, you know, I don't have the same fire I used to have. Ish, you know, like, yeah, it's not the same, yeah. Me, I can't relate to you. You're on your own on this one. Okay? Yeah, I can't, you know, it's not the same. You know, I don't feel, I don't feel the same anymore, you know. Yeah, you know, I don't have the same fire, the same drive I used to have. I cannot relate with you. No, I can't. Read what you got. What did you say, go? Lost my train of thought Second now. Peter, chapter 3. Second Peter, okay, read that. Thank you. Second Peter 3, verse 15. Watch this. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Mm -hmm. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Now this the Apostle Peter is going to give us the wisdom that the Apostle Paul was moving in, in the spirit of Christ to write the way he wrote things. Next verse. Go ahead. As also in all his epistles, epistles speaking in... in in, in all his epistles, his letters. Go ahead. Speaking in them of these things, mm -hmm. in which are some things hard to be understood. Read. Which they that are unlearned and unstable which are what? rest. Which they that are unlearned. They that are unlearned. They that are unlearned. Go ahead. And unstable rest. You see that thing? They are, un they are unlearned and they are unstable in what they think they are learning. They rest, meaning they struggle. Go ahead. As they do also the other scriptures mm -hmm. unto their own destruction. Because the only other scriptures that was written was the Old Covenant, the Old Testament scriptures. It says what? Unto their own destruction, meaning what? You just shooting yourself in the foot. You're going to get yourself killed. You're going to get yourself frustrated until you what? 
until you said, adios muchachos, you leave. Okay, go back to Ecclesiasticus now, chapter 6, verse 20. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, verse 20. Go ahead. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. Mm -hmm. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. Because for you to get that understanding, you must do what? Sirach 21, verse 11, real quick. Sirach 21, verse 11. Ecclesiasticus chapter 21, verse 11. Read. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. You see that thing? When you keep God's commandments, you'll receive understanding. Go back. Sirach 6, verse 20. Ecclesiasticus chapter 6, verse 20. Mm -hmm. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. She that is without understanding will not remain with her. You see that thing right there? So because the, the Sirach is reminding us that, listen, make sure that you still gather those instructions because the minute you stop, wisdom is going to be very unpleasant to you. And guess what? You're not going to have understanding because you don't apply. It says the Lord, the wisdom of the Lord will not remain with you. Why? Because you, are, you, are, you, you, you stop gathering instructions because you think you are at some level when you are not. The minute you stop that, the wisdom of the Lord says, okay, mm -mm, this is no longer a place to dwell. I need to keep it moving. It's no longer a safe place for me to be here. Because guess what? This Negro decided, you know what? I don't want to apply no more. I don't want to obey no more. I don't want to labor. I'm going to have the spirit of, yeah, it's not the same. I don't have the same zeal. It feels like a burden now. You know, I have to force myself to sit down to study. Guess what? It's going to be a very unpleasant to you. You are in for a very, very rude awakening. You understand? Go ahead. She will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial. You see that part right there? The wisdom of the Lord will lie upon you as a mighty stone of trial. So is, is, guess what? You, now you are stumbling. You understand? You are going to be stumbling in this truth because of what? Now we, the, the wisdom of the Lord is becoming a barren some stone unto you. Read on. And he will cast her from him ere it be long. Before it be long, though it says the wisdom of the Lord will cast you away from her. You understand? The wisdom of the Lord will depart. So in order for you to make sure that you don't fall into the condemnation of the devil, guess what you will do? You will gather your gather those instructions from the youth up. Jump down to verse 23. 23. Give ear, my son, receive my advice, and refuse not my counsel. You see that thing? Some of you are refusing counsel. Some of you are afraid to seek counsel because you don't want to discover what will come out. Some of you are afraid because I see you. Don't think I don't see you. I see you. Go ahead. Verse 24. And put thy feet into her fetters mm -hmm. and thy neck into a chain. That's what you must do. That's what the Lord says. You must do this thing. Verse 26 now. 26. Mm -hmm. Come unto her with thy whole heart and keep her ways with all thy power. That's heavy. It says, come unto her with thy whole heart. Meaning, don't be double-minded. You must come before the Lord in sincerity and in truth. Then the Lord will have mercy and give you the understanding that's written in this book. As long as you are still dabbling, you are still playing hard to get and all of that, the most I don't got time for that. We have a nation to raise up, okay? This is how you what? This is how you make sure that you don't fall into the condemnation of the devil. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 2. Proverbs 1 verse 2. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 2. Mm -hmm. To know wisdom and instruction. To, to perceive the words of understanding. So to know wisdom and instruction, the instructions that we're reading about that you must gather up from your youth. To perceive the words of understanding. Because as you, to, for, in order for you to know wisdom and instruction, you have to what? You need to be taught. It's not going to fall on your lap. It's not going to happen while you are busy just watching YouTube videos. No, 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 no. 
YouTube, watching YouTube videos is one thing, is application time. Anybody can sit down and watch a YouTube video. The key is application. Are you going to apply? Once you apply, the Lord says, I'm going to deal with you now. You understand? Go ahead. To receive the instruction of wisdom. To receive the instruction of wisdom. Because guess what? Your job is to do that in order for you not to fall into the condemnation of the devil. You what? Your job is to receive instructions of wisdom. Go ahead. Justice and judgment mm -hmm. and equi equity. And equity, like we read about in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. Go ahead. To give subtlety to the simple. You see that thing? To, to give subtlety to the simple. So as a young man, you are simple. Our job is to give you subtlety to understand the subtlety of the scriptures, the wisdom, because it's hidden. It's not in your face, boom, like that. You understand? That's the job. Why are you supposed to gather those instructions? To give subtlety to the simple. Go ahead. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. That's the key right there. That's what we read in Sirach 6 verse 18. To give young men knowledge and discretion. That's the job. We, because when you gather those instructions, guess what? You're going to have knowledge and discretion. Go ahead. A wise man will hear mm -hmm. and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. That's, that, that's, what, that's what we just read. In, this is summary of Sirach 6.18. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. So which means what? You are not going to be that spiritual midget. You are not going to be that spiritual dwarf who's not growing in the spirit. A wise man will hear. That's why Christ kept saying, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. But if you are listening but you are not hearing, you are not going to increase learning. You will be the spiritual dwarf. Go ahead. And My a son. man of what? Hold on. And a man of what? And a man yes, of again. understanding shall mm -hmm. attain unto wise counsels. A man of understanding will attain unto wise counsel. You're going to attain wise counsels because counsel will be given to you. You will attain that counsel. You will apply it. Go ahead. To understand a proverb. Mm-hmm. And the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Because over time, that's, this is what will happen to you. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm -hmm. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. You see that thing? That's the problem right there. That's why young men fall into the condemnation of the devil. Why? Because they decided to leave the fear of the Lord out of the equation. That's why it says... But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now it's it's a it's 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 a, it's a burden to you for you to sit down and study. Now it's a burden to you to follow up with questions. Now it's a burden to you to seek counsel. Why? Because you are one with your sin. You don't want to let it go. So now it says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Because when you despise wisdom and instruction, guess what? You hate yourself, like we read in Proverbs 15, verse 32. Go ahead. Verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of thy father mm -hmm. and, and forsake not the law of thy mother. That goes into honor your father and your mother, that your days may be increased upon the land. Go ahead. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head mm -hmm. and chains about thy neck. You see that thing? Add to upon your head because that's where your brain is at. That's where your mind is at. Because the things that are in your mind, you're going to apply them. It says, and chains about thy neck, because your neck is the one that's holding your head up. Whether you turn left or turn right, you must be according to what is written. That's what he's going into. Okay, so now, let's go back, 1 Timothy 3, verse 6, because that's where we was at. 1 Timothy 3, verse 6, let's go back there. All right. 1 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fell into the condemnation of the devil. You see what happens? When, when a novice, when you are a novice, a young man, you have no experience, guess what you must do? You must gather instructions from the youth, the youth up. You understand? You understand? It says, 
lest be lifted up with pride, you fall into the condemnation of the devil. That these are the preventative measures, sort of to make sure that you don't fall into the condemnation of the devil. Because this Satan, he moves with pride. You understand? Watch this. There's a scripture in Sirach. Let me see. Let me see. One, one second. The scripture in Ecclesiasticus that are actually I want to pull. Mm. I think it's in Sirach chapter 8. Let me see. Sirach 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse. Yeah, Sirach 8 verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 8. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Despise not the discourse of the wise, but acquaint thyself, thyself with their proverbs. For of them thou shalt learn instruction and how to serve great men with ease. Read verse 8 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Despise not the discourse of the wise, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. For of them thou shalt learn instruction and how to serve great men with ease. You see, you see this thing? That's how you make sure that you don't fall into the condemnation of the devil. He says, don't despise the discourse of the wise, I mean, those that have been before you, but acquaint yourself with their proverbs, meaning their wise sayings. You understand? Because of them, that's the word for means, for of them thou shall learn instruction. The instructions, where are they coming from? The laws of the Most High, from the commandments, and how to serve great men with ease. They, you're going to find it easy for you to serve great men. Go ahead. Miss not the discourse of the elders. You see that thing? The discourse, meaning their wise sayings, their instructions and their counsels. Go ahead. For they also learned of their fathers. That's, the, that's very important right there. For they also learned of their fathers. Go ahead. And of them thou shalt learn understanding and to give answer as need requireth. That's the key right there. You're going to give answer as need requireth. That's why it says, speak, young men, if they be need of thee. And the time when, when you speak, you're going to open your mouth in wisdom. Because you are gathering instructions from your youth up. Okay? Now, let's go back to First Timothy. First Timothy 3, verse 6. First Timothy, chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Not a novice. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. You see that thing? Lest be lifted up with pride, he falls into the condemnation of the devil. We don't want that for any of you. You understand? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. Mm -hmm. But what I do, that I will do, that I may you know, cut off. Oh, hold on. Okay, read it right. It says, but what I do, that I will do. What is he talking about? Meaning what? The job for him to teach, he says, that job, he says, what I do, that I will do. I'm not going to stop doing that. I'm going to continue to teach the gospel, whether brothers and sisters take heed to it or not. Whether they apply or not, the mission is a goal. That's what he's saying right there. Read verse 12 again. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. Mm -hmm. But what I do, that I will do, mm -hmm. that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. He says, those that desire occasion, meaning what? They desire occasion for them to be in positions that they are not ready for. You understand? It says, from them which desire occasion to do what? To teach. Go ahead. That wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. He says, if you want to glory, you must be found even as we. Meaning what? The way, the, 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 work, the, the work that has been put in before you came, the work that has been put in right now, you have to go through the same process to get to the level where you can say what he's saying right here. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. 
for such a false apostles. False apostles because they desire occasion. You understand? Read on. Deceitful workers. Deceitful workers. Read. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. They transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Meaning what? They 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 get to they 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 think they are somewhere when they are not. That's the that's the key. Go ahead. And no marvel, for mm -hmm. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So now, guess what? He says, and no marvel, meaning he's not shocked, he's saying. I'm not shocked. Because Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So, well, like we read in Genesis 3, when the serpent beguiled Eve, he didn't come like a snake. He says, he transformed himself into an angel of light. You understand? So, he's saying, those that get to what? Those that have set themselves up as something that they are not. That's what he's saying right there. Meaning what? You think you are somewhere when you are not. Instead of humbling down and still be a student. You understand? Still be a student. Always have the spirit to learn. Always have the spirit to gather instruction. Don't act like you know. Because the minute you do that, guess what? The, instead of me dishing out wisdom to you, I will not. Because I give you know already. There's no need. That's why when the apostle, when Christ was dealing with the, the, the scribes and Pharisees, he says, I mean, where's that? I think it's in Mark, right? Hold on a second. Let me see something. You see, he was cutting them. He was just really just chopping all over the place here. Watch this. Mm. Oh, yes, yeah. Mark chapter 2. Mark 2 verse 16. Watch this. Mark chapter 2 verse 16. Mm -hmm. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, how is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? So now they are asking, how is it that he's eating with publicans and sinners? Because Christ wasn't chilling. He was teaching them the law. Go ahead, watch this. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but this they that are sick. Heavy. Hold on. He is cutting them. He says, they that are whole have no need of the physician. Meaning, meaning what? This doesn't concern you. I agree when you are fine. Everything is all good. There is no need. This Bible, you don't need this book. You are learned already. You know everything already. So this book is not for you. That's what he's saying. They that, he says, they that are whole have no need of the physician. Go ahead. But what? But they that are sick. But they that are sick. Because they have acknowledged themselves. Listen, I'm sick. I need help. Help me. Go ahead. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So he's selling, because he, who is he referring as now as the righteous? He's referring to the scribes and fairies. So he's being sarcastic. He says, I came not to call the righteous. So I didn't call you, you righteous man, but I'm here for the sinners to call them to repentance. Is he Christ the way he was teaching? Woo! Christ was heavy. He was heavy. He's the master teacher, of course. Watch this. Give me. Hmm. Let's go back to Revelation 2. Revelation chapter 2. Watch this. Okay, let me use the other Bible because I can't see that. Revelation chapter 2 and verse, verse 2. Revelation 2 verse 2. Revelation chapter 2 verse 2. Come on. I know thy works and thy labor and thy mm -hmm. patience. Read. And how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. Mm -hmm. And has found them liars. And has found them liars because what? When you get promoted to a position, make sure to gather instructions. You understand? Read verse 3. Come on. And has born and has patience. Mm -hmm. And for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. So now, because listen, that's what I'm saying. We can identify with this right here. And as has born, meaning you have carried my name. And as patience, we have patience, we are enduring in this truth, as for my name's sake, and as labored and have not fainted. You know, we're not giving up. The mission is a go. We're fighting. You understand? Go ahead. Nevertheless, 
I have nevertheless, somewhat against hold me. on, but it says, nevertheless, I have a, there's a problem that I need you to address. That's what he's saying. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Go ahead. Because thou hast left thy first love. That's it right there. He says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Watch this. Give me First John 4 verse 9. First John chapter 4 verse 9. First John chapter 4 verse 9. Mm -hmm. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Mm -hmm. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. That, you see that thing? He says he's, he sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Because he was the first begotten of the father. He was the first creation. Watch this. Give me Colossians 1 verse 17. Colossians chapter 1 verse 17. He is the he is our he, he says because you have for, you have left your first love. That's Christ. Okay? Colossians chapter 1 verse 17. Read that. Colossians chapter 1 verse 17. Read. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. He is before all things. Talking about Christ. He is before all things and by him all things consist, meaning all things was made through him. Go ahead. And he is the head of the body, the church. Mm -hmm. You see that thing? That's what we was going over in Ephesians. He's the head of the body, the church. Read. Who is the beginning? He is the what? Who is the beginning? The alpha. Go ahead. The firstborn from the dead. The firstborn from the dead. Read on. That in all things he might have the preeminence. The preeminence, in that in all things he might have the preeminence. Give me the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 11. Revelation 1, verse 11. Watch this. Revelation, chapter 1, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm Alpha and Omega. You see that thing? He am Alpha and Omega. Remember, he's the, that's why he's the only begotten, the first begotten of the Father. He's before all things. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Go ahead. The first and the last. Mm -hmm. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, Smyrna, unto Smyrna, Smyrna, unto Smyrna, mm -hmm. and unto Pegamos, Pegamos, and unto, and unto Pegamos. Read. And unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Okay, so now, jump down to verse 17. 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. You see that thing? I am the first and the last. He is the first. Go back to 1 John now. 1 John chapter 4. Read verse 9 again. 1 John chapter 4 verse 9. Mm -hmm. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Mm -hmm. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Read. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the, propri the propitiation for our sins. This is the way as the mediator of the, old of the New Testament. You understand? He translated us from the old to the new, the propitiation for our sins. So we can be forgiven and receive the spirit of grace, and with, with, which is the chance for us to get the kingdom. You understand? Jump down to verse 19. Verse 19, mm -hmm. we love him because he first loved us. You see that thing? We love him because he first loved us. He first loved us. He is the first love. You understand? Read that again, verse 19. First John chapter 4, verse 19. Mm -hmm. We love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. Go ahead. 
If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God whom he had not seen? Because this what that's what we just we, this is what we was going over earlier on. Read that again, verse 20. First John chapter 4, verse 20. Mm -hmm. If a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is Read. a liar. He's a what? He is a liar. He says, if a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. Why? Go ahead. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how mm -hmm. can he love God whom he had not seen? Because how can you love God whom you have not seen, but your brother next to you who's made in the image of God, bear him you despise? That will make no sense. It's called hypocrisy. There's no way that you can say you love the most High God, but you hate your brother that is made in the image of God, like we read in Genesis, and, but you say you love the Lord. You don't love the Lord. You understand? That's what the Lord is teaching us here. This is what we have to learn. Go ahead. And this commandment have we from him, mm -hmm. that he who loveth God love his brother also. You see that thing? He who loveth God loveth his brother also because God teaches you love your neighbor as yourself. You understand? Go back to Revelation 2. Revelation chapter 2. Read verse 5 now. Revelation chapter 2 verse 5. Mm-hmm. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, Read. and repent, mm -hmm. and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Now I want you to read verse 5 again. Revelation chapter 2 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and Stop repent. right there. It says, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. So Christ is, 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 is talking to the church at Ephesus because he's telling them, listen, I have somewhat against thee. You understand? Because guess what? You've got, you've got young men who's out of order, who needs to what? Who needs to gather instruction from their youth up. So because of that, he says, I have a problem with you on this, on this wise. You're doing all these great things, but this is the problem I have with you. you. Remember, therefore, he says, now you need to retrace your steps and see where it all went wrong. As a congregation, that's what we are doing right now. We need to remember where it all, it all went wrong from myself and everybody else in the congregation. You understand? He's not talking about just the... No, no, it's starting with me, myself. I need to see where, it, where, where, where I went wrong and I need to see where we all went wrong so we can begin to fix these things. You understand? It says, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. Watch this. In order for that to happen, this is what we need to do as a congregation. Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. This is the first thing to do if you want to see where it all went wrong. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 5. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Go ahead. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Mm -hmm. Prove your own selves. Stop right there. He says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, whether you be in Christ. Prove your own selves. So the first thing to, 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 what? to remember where we have fallen, we need to examine. Self-examine. Individually and as a congregation, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Because guess what? Your work will, will speak for itself. Your work will speak for you. You don't have to say nothing. Your work will speak for you. Understand that? Your work will speak for you. Because when, when, the minute you start to realize that, you know what? I'm slaking in this area. I'm slaking in that area. I'm making excuses. You understand? I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Guess what? It's time to do some self-examinations to see where did it all go wrong? What, me, what, what poor decision did I make to end up here? You have to do that. You understand? It says prove your own selves. Give me that in Sirach 37, verse 27. This is how we prove our own selves. Sirach 37, verse 27. Watch this. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 37, verse 27. Read. My son, prove thy soul in thy life. You see, you, see, you see that part right there? My son, prove thy soul in thy life. You must prove your soul. You understand? Read. And see what evil, and, and see what is evil for it. Read. And give not that unto it. You see that thing right there? It says, my son, prove thy, own, prove thy soul in your life and see what is evil for it and give not that unto your soul. Don't give that to your soul that which you know is evil for your soul. Because guess what? And you're only going to know what is evil for your soul if you self-examine. You have to examine yourself. You have to look within and see what is evil for your soul. That's how you prove your own self. You understand? You have to do that. But if you are afraid to prove yourself to see what is evil for your soul, that thing is never going to go away. It will always be there. If you are afraid to look yourself in the mirror and deal with that man in the mirror, that woman in the mirror, and keep it real with yourself, with the Lord, that thing is never going to go away. You're not going to prove nothing. You understand? Okay. Go back to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 13, verse 5 again. 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Read. Know ye not your own selves? How that, that Jesus? Thing? Know you not your own selves? You know yourself. Because only you can prove your own self. Me, I can't prove you. I can't prove yourself. You, only you can do that. What, the, the, the counsel can come out of what you need to do. The question is, will you apply the counsel so you can what? You can begin to see the things that have been identified for you to work on. And if you have identified them, they have been brought out, will you work on them? Will you put an effort? Will you make an effort to work on these things? That's the key. You have to do that. Because if you don't, that thing will never go away. It will still remain. Go ahead. Know ye not your own selves, how that mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. That's what we read in First John chapter 3, verse 19. You understand? So it says, Know you not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. Meaning what? Without void of judgment. You don't understand right from wrong. You understand? Because the law is not in you. Because that's what the law is there for. Like we read in Romans 7 verse 7. The law is there to teach you right from wrong. But once you depart from the law, you're not going to have, you're not going to know right from wrong. You're going to be void of judgment. Give me that in Titus 1 verse 16. Titus chapter 1 verse 16. Titus chapter 1 verse 16. Go ahead. They profess that they know God. Mm -hmm. But in works they deny him. You see that? Being thing? abominable. Hold on. They profess that they know God. How do they profess? We are the Israelites. We are Jews. You understand? That's how they profess. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. You understand? In, in your actions, you deny the law. That's what he's going into. In your works, because your works is what? Your application of God's commandments. Give me that in Psalms 78. There's one in 2nd Ezra, but let's just use the one in Psalms. Psalm 78. I believe that's the one. Psalm 78. Okay, Psalm 78 and verse, verse 11. No, is no, no, not verse eleven. Psalm seventy-eight and verse. Is it verse seven? Read verse seven. Psalm chapter seventy-eight, verse seven. Read that they might set their hope in God, and not mm. forget the works of God. Read, but keep His commandments. Read that again. Psalm chapter seventy-eight, verse seven. Mm -hmm. that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. 
You see, so the works of God is his commandments. So when it says in works, go back to Titus 1, verse 16. In works, they deny him, meaning what? When it comes to keeping God's commandments, they won't do it. Titus 1, verse 16 again. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. Read. They profess that they know God, but mm -hmm. in works, they deny him. You see that thing? But when it comes to application, they don't want, they deny the Lord. Read. Being abominable. You see that part right there? Being abominable, being disgusting in the sight of God, making the most high God sick. I'll prove it. Give me Isaiah. Mm. Isaiah 26. Because it says, in works they deny him. You understand? In works they deny him. Watch this. No, no. Isaiah 50. I was in Isaiah 26. Hmm. Isaiah 65, verse 5. That's the one right there. Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 5. Go ahead. Which say, stand by yourself. Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 5. Which say, stand by thyself. Come not near to me. For I am holier than thou. Read. These are a smoke in my nose. Mm. A fire that burns all the day. That's some heavy stuff right there. Oh, that's heavy. It says, these are a smoke in my nose. A fire that burneth all the day. Go back to where he was at now. Titus 1, verse 16 again. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. Go ahead. They profess that they know God. They profess. Verse... Meaning what? They, they, they profess with their mouth. That they know the Lord. You, you, you know what that means? Give me Isaiah 29 real quick. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny the Most High. Isaiah 29 verse 13. Let's read that. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13. Go ahead. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth mm -hmm. and with their lips, to honor me. You see that part right there? They draw near me with their lips and with their mouth, with their lips do they, they what? They draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me. Go ahead, but what? But have removed their heart far from me. Their mind is not in this book. Go ahead, meaning what? Because with your mind, you're supposed to do what? Romans 7, 25, give me that real quick. Romans 7, verse 25. With their mind, they're supposed to do what? Let's see what the Lord says. Romans chapter 7, verse 25. Read that. Romans chapter 7, verse 25. Go ahead. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Mm -hmm. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Read. But with the flesh, the law of sin. It says, it says it says, so then with the mind, I serve the law of God. That's what you're supposed to do with that mind. Serve the law of the Most High. Go back to Isaiah 29, verse 13. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Read. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth mm -hmm. and with their lips to honor me, Read. but have removed their heart far from me. Go ahead. And they are fear to what me is taught by the precept of men. You see that thing? Because they, they worship men more than the Most High. But the key here, it says, they draw near me with their mouth and with their lips, they honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. You understand? Their mind. They don't serve the law, the most high God. They don't serve the laws of God with their mind. They've removed their mind far from the most high, but they worship him with their lips, meaning lip service. They say, but do not. The spirit of hypocrisy. Their fear towards me, meaning their understanding of the Lord is taught by the precepts of men. Wicked men who don't understand this Bible, who don't want to apply it. Okay, go back. Where was it? Titus chapter 1, verse 16 again. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. Mm -hmm. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable mm -hmm. and disobedient. 
That's the key. Being abominable and disobedient. That goes back to in works they deny him because they don't want to obey his laws. Go ahead. And unto every good work, reprobate. Reprobate. Void of judgment. Unto every good work. What is the good works? Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Read that. Unto every good work, reprobate. Romans 7 verse 12. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. You see that thing? So the good works, which is the law and the commandments, it says they are reprobate. When it comes to the law and the commandments, they won't do it. So therefore, they are void of judgment. They cannot make proper judgments between what's right and what's wrong. Like we read in 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 17. Okay, watch this. Uh, let's go back. Revelation 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 5 again. Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent. You see that? And do so the once first you, Hold on. Once you examine, it says, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. You can only do that through self-examination. And repent. You must turn from your wicked ways. You understand? Repent. Go ahead and do what? And do the first works. Do the first works. The first works. When you first came into this truth, watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews chapter 3. And do the first works. That still goes into Christ. But watch this. Hebrews chapter 3. Let's start at verse, let me see. Maybe I want to start at verse 12. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews 3 and verse, yeah, start at verse 12. Hebrews 3 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So the minute you hear brothers be saying, no, I don't have the same zeal anymore. It doesn't feel the same anymore. I don't have the fire anymore. It feels, it feels, it feels. Guess what? They have a what? They have an evil heart of unbelief. But guess what? They are departing from the living God. That's what they are doing. They are departing from the living God. They just don't want, to, don't want to come out and say it, but that's what they are saying. Read on. But exhort one another daily. How many times? Daily. That goes back into Malachi 3 verse 16. It says, for they then for then they I'm paraphrasing it. They that fear the Lord speak often one to another. Go ahead. Come on, Hebrews 3, verse 13. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. Mm -hmm. But exhort one another daily. Daily, go while, ahead. While it is called today. Read. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Now, that's the key right there. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Because sin can harden you. If you don't repent, it will harden your spirit. Where it's no longer, it, you, know, you no longer feel regret anymore when you break the commandments. Yeah. That's the heaviness of sin. Because at first, you will feel guilty for what you've done. Over time, you keep doing it, you no longer feel guilty anymore. Sin is hardening you. That's, your, that's a sign that you are departing from the living God. You have to listen, return back to the Most High ten times harder. You understand? And ask for mercy. Read again. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13. Read. But exhort one another daily mm -hmm. while it is called today. That's why we have classes on a daily basis for exhortation to keep you, to keep you in the spirit. Go ahead. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Read. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. That's the key right there. If, if, that's the big word right there. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. The beginning of our confidence, what, that's Christ. He is our first love. We must return back to him. Because the, when it says the beginning of our confidence, you know when you came in, you oh, I'm an Israelite, oh, you are excited, you are happy that you are, an, you are a Jew. You are not nigger no more, okay? You are not ducky no more. Mm -mm. 
You are an Israelite now. So that's the, that's the, the, that's the beginning of your confidence, steadfast in, unto the end. He says that's where you need to go back to. The beginning of your confidence, your first love, we need to go back there. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? That's, my, that's some heavy stuff. Heavy stuff right there. Go back to Revelation 2 now. Again, Revelation 2. Revelation chapter 2 verse 5. Read. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen mm. and repent. Read. And do the first works. Read. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. So when he says, he says, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Christ is not saying, no, no, shut down the church now. No, he's saying, listen, I'm giving you a chance to get it together. Fix it. He didn't say, okay, now leave the truth. No, he's saying, now re remember where you fell so you can what? Retrace your steps, repent, do the first works, or else, now that's the flip side. If you don't remember where you have fallen, if you don't repent. He says, then I'm going to come unto you quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place. Except thou, re he's repeating it again. Except thou repent, meaning what? Get it together. Fix it, he's saying. You understand? Except thou repent. Give me that in Proverbs 6 verse 23. He says, the candlestick out of his place. What is this candlestick? Proverbs 6 verse 23. Let's read that. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Go ahead. For the commandment is a lamp, mm -hmm. and the law is light. Read. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. You see that part right there? For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. The law is light. The law, that lamp right there, that's the menorah. The laws of God is the light that comes from that candlestick. So this goes into what? The understanding. Is I'm gonna take away you, I'm gonna take your understanding from you. You understand? Except thou repent. When it says I'm gonna take away your candlestick, your understanding. The wisdom that I've given you, the understanding that you got, the Lord says, I'm gonna take it away from you if you don't repent. Luke 19, verse 26. Read that. Luke chapter 19, verse 26. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you, that unto everyone which hath shall be given. You see what he's saying? Unto everyone that has, and to everyone which hath shall be given. Meaning those that have the understanding, they are keeping the commandments, they are applying themselves. He says, more shall be given unto you. Go ahead. And from him that has not, Meaning even the that one that, has. Hold on. The, it says, from him that has not, the one that has lost it because of what? Because they were hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Go ahead. Even that he had shall be taken away from him. You see what Christ is saying? He says, I'm going to take it away from him. I'm going to take that understanding from him. That's what he's saying right there. Go back to Revelation 2. Revelation 2 verse 5. Again. Revelation chapter 2 verse 5. Read. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent mm. and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove mm -hmm. thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Next verse, come on. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Nicolaitan. The, Nicolaitan, the, the Nicolaitans, go ahead. The Nicolaitans, which I also hate. So Christ is saying, listen, I see that you hate the Nicolaitans, I also hate the Nicolaitans. The Nicolaitans was a group of Israelites that worshipped the god Nike, the god of victory, because that's what Nicolaitans actually is. Nicolaitans is Nike, the god of victory. Go ahead. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Mm -hmm. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. You see that thing? Read that again, verse 7. Hmm, heavy stuff. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. 
Stop right there. It says, he that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. So what we, we've been going over, the, the prayer is everybody understands what we, just, we, what we are going over. You understand? He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. Go ahead. To him that overcometh will I give to, to eat. To him, to him that overcometh, you overcome your own sins. Go ahead. The Lord says he will do what? To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. Mm -hmm. The tree of Which life. Is, he says, I'm gonna, hold on. He says, I'm going to give you the tree of life. Give me that in Sirach 19, 19. He says, to him will I give, and will I give unto him the tree of life. If you overcome your own mental hangups, the Lord says, I'm going to give you the tree of life. Read that. Sirach 19, verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. Mm -hmm. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. That's the key right there. You're going to receive the fruit of the tree of immortality, eternal life. That's the tree of life. Go back to Revelation 2, verse 7 again. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. Mm -hmm. He that that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Guess what? That goes back into the garden. That goes also the third heaven. Okay. I'm going to end the class right there. Okay. All praise to the most High God. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. That, that gave his life for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, that we this day, we might have life. All right. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. These do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. These do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh the nation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.